Hello and welcome to 360 GamerCast, episode 162 for Tuesday the 25th of April 2023. I'm your host Mark Webb, Gamertag, Pearson ID, Steam ID, Webby, 360G. And joining me on this very fine evening is... Your government security alert, Nick Fights. Uh, I will not buy a blue tick, it's Sly Armand. Uh, and haven't left since the last time, so they switch. Yes, it's not been long since we recorded, has it? Thursday, and it's now Sunday, so it just feels like we've been constantly podcasting all week, because we also had a little chit-chat on Monday as well, which I put up on the Patreon, so... Um, it's been a busy week for podcasting, really, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's been a good time. Um, I really enjoyed our Sega special that we recorded on Thursday. I managed to get it up on the Patreon on Friday. Obviously, there's a little 20-minute snippet on the free feed, but um, that was one of the f- best podcasts we've done in a while. I think I love those episodes where we go back and talk about the glory days of video games. So, a shameless plug. If you want to listen to it, sign up to the Patreon. Just one of those uh, things, isn't it, where you sort of start opening the memory banks of uh, all the quality that there was back then. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, mate. Yes. So, um, we might as well get started talking about the games we've been playing. Uh, I'm just going to start it off with a, a brand new game that come out this week that me and Sensei have been playing together, uh, and that is Dead Island 2. So if we would start off with the biggie. Good one. Yeah, yeah man. I like it. Yeah, so I really like it. I think the... So the, I. the Oh, yeah, I forgot, Sly. Sly, you got it on the PlayStation. Please explain to me your reasoning for this. Okay, so four of my friends that are within a time zone of two hours of me also all bought it on PlayStation because they all play PlayStation. <laughs> well, that's so... actually, yeah. No, I no, that's a good enough excuse, mate. I'll give you that one. Because uh, otherwise I'd be playing it by myself on the Xbox or trying to play it four in the morning to play with you. So Yeah, no, I completely yeah. understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, and, and that is the problem, right, where games aren't cross-play. So, yeah. So obviously, um, it's not cross-play, which is a shame. So, um, because I buy most of my games on PC these days, um, yeah. so I I uh, actually picked up Dead Island Two uh, for the Xbox Series X. I bought the physical. Uh, I bought a physical copy. I've actually been buying a few physical copies recently. It's crazy, but I had a weird thing with mine. So, my missus has been wanting to use the TV downstairs, which is fine. So, I moved the um, Xbox Series X upstairs. Um, because obviously my S, the S doesn't have a CD drive, right? So I have to play on the X. And it wouldn't read the disc. I was like, what the fuck? So I thought I'll try, I'll try, I thought, so I thought I'll try another disc. Didn't work. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? So downstairs in my TV unit, I have the Xbox Series X laying down. And when I bring right. it upstairs on a rare occasion, I have it as a tower, um, just because it's next to my PC and it looks nicer. I turned the Xbox off and put it on its side and it started reading the discs again. So, Weird. yeah, it's something going on with the disc drive. But the only reason I did that is because back in the day, you used to get disc read issues with the old systems, like with the Dreamcast and and, and things like that. I remember having to turn it upside down to read discs, bizarrely. So, um, yeah, it's definitely an issue with my Series sure X. Not a true believer in physical media, whether it's going to start... Um, yeah, I was oh, going to yeah. say, I've always had my, my X in vertical, so I can't say I've had that problem. Yeah. I don't even know you could put it the other way. Yeah, you can. Yeah, was it the Xbox One, the video recorder, when you couldn't put wonky? Is that right? I th- no, I'm pretty sure you've been able to put all the Xboxes vertical. I'm sure, well, I thought it was just that one you couldn't, but... I don't know, and then they changed it with the series, mm. not the series. Mm. Oh, how am I supposed to know what Xbox are called what anymore? So one of the things I always remember, I think it was, was it the PS2? If you turned it on its side, you could actually pull the little PS logo out and twist it. Yeah, so yeah. I only yeah. found yeah. out about that out. last year. <laughs> yeah, I've got that. Even the Slim does that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it is really, really cool. Um, All right. Um, 
Could okay, I anyway, let's talk about the game. Island? I reckon I've, I might have probably played it the most out of anybody. Mm. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some flack immediately. I have completed the main story already. What, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, wow. I finished it last night. Um, wow. Entirely in co-op, I might add. I That's didn't rush really up cool. Mode. I did it. Did it in co-op, the whole thing. It did you do awesome. all the side missions as well? Or just yeah, so I'm going back to mop them up now. I sort of did them as, a, as they came up to me. Some right. of them I think you have to kind of go looking for. So, yeah, But as yeah. they kind of became available to me, I did those ones. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm at like 50% total completion, I think. So I'm going to keep mopping up the side quests with my friend. Yeah. Um, I think I'm about level 23. I think max level 30. Okay. Um, so I keep grinding up, but the weapons you get as you like level up, you get like legendary and superior tier weapons. Right. Um, I've got I've got this really big hammer. That's that's fun. Um, you can break the leg of a zombie in like one hit if you charge it up. Um, how good is the like dynamic combat system, by the way, where you can like chop off a leg and then the mm. game like recognizes you've done that and then the zombie will hobble towards you with one leg or if you take both legs out it'll start crawling along the ground towards you ah yeah it's I so nice like. to have a good combat uh, system i mean i mean me and darren uh played some co-op on friday when it come out yeah, i haven't played nice. it since then um oh wow yeah because last night i mean I, I was on all last night to one in the morning but um was playing someone else talking about it later can't, you can't really play it with the kids <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you know, Watch when the kids are... Watch this axe into yeah. this guy's head, lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what me and Darren did, I, I, I think we... we I, I enjoyed the way that we were playing it because sometimes I find I, tend, I have the tendency to rush, uh, but Darren kind of slowed me down because he likes to kind of just explore. And we... Uh, and, and I like that because we picked up a lot of stuff to the point where we were maxed out on all the art, like the um, bits to build your weapons and repair them and all that, you know, all the little yep. bits and bobs. Um, also, we we came across quite a few side quests. We've got extra people in the base of operations in the mansion, yep. which, which was really cool. Um, I really like it. I think um, it's designed really well because I like it, how it's not one massive open world it's kind of split off into sections of open world if yeah, that makes sense there's like there's like nine maps i think in the end um yeah. but they're all they're all pretty big as they are to be honest yeah um yeah so and there's all different environments like i don't want to spoil anything but you go to different areas of mm -hmm. it's set, it's all set in los angeles um but it's all different areas and different you know you've got like venice beach um, famous from well, you know, just big. The the it's got the Santa Monica Pier as well. Mm -hmm. Um, all locations that I'm like, hang on, I've been here in GTA Five. <laughs> yeah. Like running along the pier, I'm like, I've been here before. Um, yeah. I think it's a very good looking game as well. Like some of the lighting. I don't know if you've stopped to take a look at it, but it's actually really well. Uh, like, I I actually think. Because, as I say, like the the reviews have been quite middling. Some have been, you know, it's been yeah. getting average reviews. But I, I think down and out, it's a really fun game. I think the graphics are good. I really like the gameplay uh, with yeah. the melee weapons. I've not come across any guns yet. You, uh, you'll get them. But um, I mean, I think it's quite hard to be honest. I mean, I've died a few oh, times, yeah. but but in co-op. Oh, yeah. It makes it a bit easier in cop because you can just either get revived or you just respawn just around the corner, uh, which is quite cool. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the weapon de degradation, but you can uh, fix them though. So but, yeah, but you can, but you you can fix, fix yeah, but you can fix them so it makes you try different weapons. To be honest, yeah. so is it as bad as Zelda where the, the no no it's hit. not that it's not that bad. No, no, it's good. not that bad, mate. Just um, how you well, it well, even well, says on on the when you look at the weapons, what their durability is, and you can increase it with like mods and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The mod system is good. You have to go look look around for blueprints, um, and that lets you mod certain things. Not every weapon can use every blueprint. I found out. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it for the most part that's true. 
but then there are some blueprints that seem to only apply to like slashing weapons or blunt weapons. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a good variety though. I try to have like a katana on hand, like a hammer on hand, uh, like a couple guns on hand. I try and have like a bit of everything on, Mm. on me, keep that Mm. diversity there so I can handle different types. There are zombies later on that fucking resist all different elemental types. So you have to just use blunt force trauma on them. Um, so there's a good enemy variety as well. That's good. And I'd say that the, the, like the design of the zombies, I can't recall seeing too many different or too many of the same design repeated, which is good in a game like this big. So like there was a lot of different unique character models. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. um I think like so what me and Dan play I quite like the way it's laid out as well because there's like secret keys to get into areas, you need to buy these fuses to get into other areas. Yeah. Um and I, I really like the humor of it as well, like especially on some of the side missions, like some of the characters you meet are just brilliant. They're really, really good. Like one of the ones we did, there was like this influencer girl. And at first I found her a bit annoying, but I come around to yeah. just finding her just a piss take of those types of people um yeah, even though her at, at mission was time, annoying yeah. yeah at the same time can we get a, a game that's like this that's actually played seriously because i can't think of a single one that kind of is because even if you look at like the og games like dead rising and that they're all done in tongue-in-cheek and comedic yeah. ways yeah and i was gonna i was no gonna like, say yeah, like maybe Dying Light would be, I suppose, more the, the, first the realistic one. kind of thing. Yeah. But people wouldn't act like the way a lot of the people in this actually act. Yeah, I know what you mean. So I, it's not one of my games played. I only played it the like the intro mission. But uh, earlier today, I decided while my friend wasn't around, so I couldn't play two. Uh, I decided to play Riptide. Um, very different tonally. It's actually serious. There, everyone's like panicking, like they're on a ship that's going down at the start. So mm. it's a big tonal shift from the. F- I don't remember if the first game was serious or not, but Riptide seems pretty serious. Mm-hmm. So I think far. the first game was reasonably serious in a regard. Yeah, I mean, like, this if one you think is of more that original trailer that set the yeah. internet ablaze back then. Yeah, like that was very much played for. Sort of like the serious consequences and stuff. I was gonna say I haven't paid attention to any of the marketing for Dead Island Two. I knew it was coming, no. and I was like, "I'm gonna get it." Um, there's a character that was in the first two games. He was one of the playable characters that he's yeah. in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam B. Yeah, hoodoo yeah. you voodoo bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That so is I'm funny. So 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 yeah. I mean, there, obviously there is a few misgivings with it. But I think overall, I think. Um, it's, well, I haven't played it single player. I don't think I would want to play it single player, but I definitely had a blast playing it co op with Darren. And I know a few other people on the Xbox have got it as well, so there's not going to be too short of co op partners. It, Sorry, it runs, better. it runs better in single player. Oh, yeah, well, well, I was nice. actually I'm... having quite a lot of zombies teleporting around and stuff when we was playing in co op, right? Like there was a thing... connection issue, yeah. Um... The thing I've noticed is they respawn really quickly. Like, you'll yeah. clear an area of zombies and they'll be back. You go in the building and come out again, they'll be back. That's yeah. my one sort of grievance with it, is the zombies respawn too quickly. Mm. I might change that in an update, I'd imagine. Yeah. Because there's um, been times as well where I've come out of a building, looked to my right and been like, right, there's three zombies down there, and there's one up there. Let me go and deal with these three and I'll turn back to the three that were there and they've just disappeared oh weird I I was gonna say I I can kind of speak to how they do level scaling and stuff when um when you're not the same level as the person you're playing with so me and my friend we played the whole game together um but we had another friend who bought the game and they were way back at the start so we joined Mm -hmm. them and what it effectively does is it just slashes your health bar down to like what theirs would be, um, oh. and you and you do you do the same kind of damage numbers to the zombies that the per, that the person with the lowest level would do. Right, but you get to keep all your weapons. Um, 
I wouldn't say it makes it particularly easier or more difficult. It seems about on par for what it was. Um, so it handles scaling pretty well. But it, it does a thing. Only You can only join in a party the person who is the furthest back in the story. Right. So, yeah, so... We, me and my friend, we played the whole game together, so we can join each mm. other whenever now. It's fine. Um, but if we play with any of our other friends who sort of picked it up sort of today, we have yeah. to join them, which is yeah. fine. I, it doesn't I matter. actually like that idea. It means that someone can't end up having their save file or their achievement or progress screwed around because they're yeah. sort of like jumped ahead of where they were themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it has registered and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. that's that's yeah. perfectly fine. I think. I think it's done well. Um, side quest progress syncs across everybody. So no matter what game you do the side quest in, um, it I think that's unlocked for everyone. Oh, so okay. that's that's good. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different kind of variety, but I I have found uh, quite a lot of the quests just involve go here, grab this, put this in here, and kill zombies. There's not a lot of variance in what the quests are, but the different quest givers and the kind of themes as you do the quest, it kind of keeps it interesting enough. Um, right. I think this might be my game of the year so far. Oh, wow. I, wow. But that's because it's, it's a, I haven't had like a fun co-op experience like this with, well, with a new game in a, mm. in a while. Mm. I was, I was saying Gears with you was fun recently, but that's like an old game. But yeah. how many new co-op games have we had? I yeah. mean, I was looking forward to Redfall until FPS gate. Um, yeah, I mean, but I'll we can just play, play it on PC, mate. Yeah, that's PC. Right. We'll yeah. play it on PC. But yeah, yeah I feel bad for the people who were going to play it on Xbox who were very mm. disappointed about mm. the uh, FPS. We'll talk about so, that again I, later, mate. So, oh, well, yeah. I was, yeah, I was going to say, do you think that people who were looking forward to Redfall on the Xbox who have been burned by the 30 FPS thing have been driven to buy this instead. Oh, Do you definitely. Think that's driven I, some sales? It has, I, has it, I reckon it has boosted sales. It's straight Which away out the gate. This, this is basically like, yeah, it's 60 FPS and... Uh, yeah. What? Uh, whatever it is, scaling resolution. It's, which it's uh, 1800p. It's not quite 4K. It's higher than 2K. <laughs> I don't mind but, that. You know what? It looks fine. Yeah. Um, I I appreciate in a way that there's no graphic settings on the console versions on next gen. It's just like it runs. It runs at almost yeah. 4K, 60 FPS, pretty much locked. I mean, I mm -hmm. I I felt it's locked. I haven't seen any problems. Um, I think it looks and runs great, and yeah. and I say it is a lot of fun because I think um, you know, the world is spread out nicely. The missions I think yeah. are a lot of fun. Uh, I think the attention to detail uh of the of the of the locations is really good like you go around the houses oh, yeah. and they're just full of stuff and just the streets and everything's just 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 feels real you know it feels re realistic you know what i mean um so yeah it's all good man i, I, th I think it's a great game to be honest there's yeah. a lot there the the weapon modification there's there's six characters to try out oh yeah who did everyone pick I chose the firefighter bloke. Oh, yeah, that's who my friend played as. I think it was like Carlo. I just went for someone with a high toughness, which I'm kind of glad because you, you can get mullered pretty quickly. if you're Yeah, not so it's a problem with, with my guy gets mullered well quick, yeah. My only one gripe. So I played as Jacob. Um, now, my friend was bitched about this. So whoever gets to the mission objective first... They're the person who speaks in the cutscene. Um, my character likes to joke around and is a bit of a knob. Um, right. He he is nearly unbearable to listen to. That is my one gripe. So <laughs> I, I let my friend, for the most part, he's playing as the FBI. I oh, know he's a he's a firefighter. He lets the firefighter guy talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because my guy is like he's English, but he he jokes around way too much. He's like, oh, we're going to kill some zombies and get some tea and crumpets in it. And I'm like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I'm like, you would not be talking like this. But yeah. that's, he's, uh, yeah, that, I, uh, that's on me. I, I picked a character that's really obnoxious, but it's fine. Yeah. You just get the other person to go to the mission objective and then they do the talking instead. Mm. 
but, but yeah, I think overall it's a really good game. I, th- I think oh, it's yeah. had some unfair low review scores in the media, um, but uh, everyone's got their own opinion. But I think it's a real solid co-op game. It really, really is a lot of fun. It brings me back to those kind of 360 days, you know, with the, with the where we had all those good, good co-op games. So, yeah, I highly recommend it, especially if you've got a, a, a mate or two to play it with, you know. Yeah, I can't see it being particularly fun on your own. I think the fun is in playing it in co-op. Oh, I yeah. don't know. Um, playing it, I've enjoyed playing it on my own, to be honest. I get to explore oh. without anyone running ahead. Um, <laughs> and bringing a load of like skull fucking zombies over to me. Lols. <laughs> but yeah, I, I have actually worked out because I bumped into them a few times in the open world when I've been going around and it literally just says like, yeah, these are just zombies that are way over your level. You need to come back here later on and deal with them. Yeah. It's, it's just the fact that like, I think certain areas are kind of level locked. Yeah. And certain parts of it. Uh, there's, it's also got quite a lot of depth in the fact that it was only when I was going through like your challenge log the other day. That oh, I yeah. realised that completing your challenge logs actually unlocks permanent stat bonuses across all your characters. Oh, that's oh, really good. Oh, I didn't know kind that. Kind of like how, obviously, the badass system in Borderlands used to work. Yes. So you can unlock extra resilience, which means when you're going back through the game with a character with shit resilience, they're actually going to be able to take a bit more damage because you've unlocked permanent resilience increase. Nice. So if you look for all the different stats for the the, the, the um, different types of challenge logs, it will show you the bonuses that they unlock when you complete them, and there's quite a few there. Nice. Well, that's so good. it adds to the longevity and stuff as well. Yeah, that is good. I'm just, un- I'm just unsure how much replayability there's going to be once you finish the story. That's my opinion. I... I don't think there's going to be much. Once you've done every lost and found quest and every side quest, I think you'll probably be done with it. And I think and I'll, I'll just... Be the same what's way. the end yeah. game then? Because they did say there's supposed to be stuff to do after you finish the main story. I mean, there's side quests, there's the lost and found quests, and then there's trying to get, I guess, all superior or legendary weapons um, and get yourself to max level. But I don't know what there is past that because I'm at... I finish the main story and that's all I have to do. So I, I guarantee you I'll be at max level before I finish the story. Probably. Probably because you're gonna do <laughs> as many quests as you can along the way. I've gone the other way around. We were yeah. like, let's but because we were playing two of us together and then a couple of our other friends bought it, we were like, Well what let's do the story and then when we go back to help people we can do quests along side quests mm. along the way mm. and that still contributes yeah. to our progress. Yeah, um, makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so we we did the story. We did maybe like, you know, six side quests along the way, and there's like 33. What I like, it's a little small feature on the main menu. It gives you a progress tracker, and it tells you how many quests you've done and how many oh, quests good. there are. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like side quests, you know, 10 of 33 or whatever it is, and main quests is like mm. 16 of 24. It's it, it keeps track of all that on the main menu for you. It's mm. very helpful. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely uh, fun, and obviously, like you say, the weird sort of system they've used to show body degradation and whatnot. Yeah, flesh system. Yeah, like if you actually watch zombies walk through like the corrosive acid stuff, like their skin, oh, yeah, the skin comes off, come off, and they just mm-hmm. end up like almost like a bag of bones by the end of yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's fucking good, man. I'm just looking forward to playing more more of it, man. To be fair. So I have to find some time this week in an evening or two. Uh, I uh, I think this game has sold pretty well, to be honest. Re- regardless of whatever the Metacritic is, I think it's about a 70, which is mm. fine. Um, mm. I think it's well, sold pretty well. the original games did well. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah, got higher the than the... It's got higher than the original. The original was like a 69 or a 70, and I think this one's sitting at like 72. So it's on par with the first one. And the Riptide. Awesome. Um, 
Well, as long as it's fun, who gives yeah. a fuck what the reviewers say anyway? You know what I well, mean? Well, I, so... I, I just want it to sell well enough to justify a third one. Or well, a, in what, another an 10 years? <laughs> no, I don't think they're going to let it blow out to that kind of proportion again. I, I think I think if this one has done well enough, that'll sort of incentivize them to get working on the third one. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I reckon we'll see another one within the next... It only took them 10 years to get this one, Yeah. Yeah, yeah it changed... Can we, can we just say, say about that? It changed hands, like, three times. Um, it was first shown off at, like, Eurogamer or Gamescom in 2014. It was playable I, in 2014. I remember wow. played it. I played it at Eurogamer. Fucking hell. Yeah. Back in the um, day, when we so went, for it to release, for it. for it to release at all is amazing first. But second, that it released and it works and it's fun. That's yeah. quite an achievement. So good on them. Yeah. It's usually when their games not just change studios like once or twice. You're like, mm. this this one was like third time lucky, wasn't it? Yeah, and, just, and I think oh, it's released in a really good state. state. Yeah, I mean, I was worried about obviously, uh, like the the classic modern storytelling and all that kind of shit. But it, it's kind of there a little bit, but it's nowhere near as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, there's there's bits of cringe, but I would say it's mostly all right. Yeah, I mean, it's the LA setting. Everyone's kind of vain anyway. Kind of adds to the plot a little bit. Mm. I mean, there's a few amusing bits. Like, obviously, one of the earlier missions was where you're waiting for the guy on the stairlift. Oh, fuck that. Oh. Mission, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, the mission was called You Can't Rush the Classics. And I yeah. just thought well, that was kind of amusing. Like, um, <laughs> it was bad enough doing that mission once, but when we went back to play with our other friend, we had to do that mission again. And I was like, fuck, we got to wait for the guy on the stairlift again. <laughs> Good times. Also, I will say I do appreciate the way that resources and things in the world respawn after a certain amount of time. Yeah. Oh, that's because good. Because yeah. it means, like, whenever you're going back through certain areas and whatnot, you're always going to have things there to upgrade your weapons or, like, money to pick up to, to repair it and stuff. So you're never going to completely clear an area out. Yeah, and have nothing to do there, so you can always go back to a favourite area and just like tit about and stuff. And although the areas are kind of closed down to be relatively small, they're so well layered that it will still take you a, a fair few hours to fully explore each of those zones. Oh yeah, especially when you can't actually access certain parts of them until later in the stories. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, shall we move on from Dead Island 2 then? So I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about it again in a couple of weeks Thanks when we've you, rinsed you. the fuck out of it. Um, awesome. It's good. Oh, good. Highly recommend it. Pick it up. If you're on the fence, just fucking get it. It's great. So That's my for review. For a right price. I mean, it's not a full, full price, is it? I think it, like, I picked this okay. up for just over 40. I, I got mine for 79 oh, Australian dollars, which right? is... Which is relatively cheap because most games are at least a hundred at launch. So I got mine for seventy nine. I actually traded some games for the first time in a while, and uh, I got this for free and Jedi uh, Survivor for free as well with my wow. trade in deal. Trade two, get new game free. Are you so. looking forward to the uh, immense smashing your hard drive is going to take for that? Yeah, I uh, cleared space already and I have set the Xbox up to do a preload because the good thing about Xbox is you can set up preloads of games you buy on disc. You can download any game in advance and then wet your disc in and it works. Where'd you I do that? Ah, uh, from the app. You just like find the game and press like preload to console. Or oh, I think you can do it. would be useful for me considering it takes like four or five hours yeah. to fucking download the game on yeah so yeah on. jedi is 155 okay. gig <laughs> fucking stupid yeah yeah <laughs> learn some file compression exactly it's so yeah. bad so i traded uh, a couple of switch games that i haven't played in several years and uh i got yeah dead island and jedi for free nice it's nice yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, well, let's move on to Nick then. Anyway, uh, see what Nick's been playing. 
Yeah, I haven't been playing much, but I did play today. I don't know if Switch has been playing or downloaded it. The Street Fighter Six demo. Yes. Yeah, oh, so I have also that's... played it. I yeah. downloaded it and played a tiny bit. As yeah, well. played a tiny. I mean, I've deleted it already, so that's how much fun it was. Oh, <laughs> I, I really yeah. liked it. <laughs> well, I only did the tutorial and the bits where I was just playing. I where because I think you can only select like the two modes. Yeah. And when they were like, "Oh, build your own character," I was like, "No, nope, can't be bothered." So then I came out and just went into. The tutorial where you played, I think I think there's a new character called Luke. I can't remember yeah, if he was yeah. in the last one. He, was, he started off in five. Mm. Like they introduced him as an extra character in five. Yeah, he I didn't really play five much or why. four, but, right. but yeah, played him versus old man Ryu and played through the tutorial of that and a couple of fights because I think there's only those two are in the demo. Or in that part of the demo. So I played through that, and I was like, no, I've done this before, and that's more Street Fighter. But that's weird what they've done. I don't know if they did in the last one. It's kind of gone sort of weird, like Jet Set Radio announcers screaming down your headphones at all times for some reason. You can turn that off. It's it's basically commentator mode. Mm. Delete the whole thing so, so you that's can pretend off. you're Yeah, so you can pretend you're in, in some shitty esports or something. Yeah, well, I, that's it. I, uh, I um, well, the first thing that annoyed me was um, I went into the um, you know, well, okay, we'll start from the beginning. So there's a new mode where you make your character, and then you go through the tutorial bollocks, and then you get into this open world city area, and basically, um, you can just pick fights with the random people walking around, and goes into you know Street Fighter fight mode. Anyway, I was just pl- I was playing it, and I was thinking, oh, this feels a bit off. Like, so, yep. like, the buttons. I was like, what the fuck's going on with all my buttons? Because I was used to doing, you know, like, you know, like, the moves that you used to do where, like, two buttons were punches and two were kicks, right? I was like, what the fuck's going on? So then it goes to, and then and a little bit later it says, oh, you can change your controls to the old style by doing this. But Yeah, my, my default was these stupid new controls. Yeah, Because I was... Yeah. I was Training, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Where's my uh, why? Because buttons that should be punches weren't, yeah, 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 but all buttons that were kicks were punches and stuff. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah, in the two, in the other one, I'd make the you know, just the one over to the right rather than that one. It just, um, you could pick before you start the tutorial, do you want classic or new controls? Yeah, like, you can't do that in the controls, open world mode, so. Ooh. Anyway, so in the open world mode, it said, oh, you can change it, but I couldn't find a way to change them whilst I was in that mode. So I had to, so, well, there was two reasons why I had to quit back to the main menu. And the other one was like, when in the fights, I was like, oh, this doesn't feel very smooth. It's, get, it's a bit choppy. And then Hurricane in the Discord said, oh, it defaults to um, graphical mode. I was like, yeah. oh. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. That so pissed me off so yeah, much. Yeah. Because it felt it felt sluggish and it felt yeah. choppy. And that when yeah. I stopped playing and then Perrican posted that afterwards. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that makes uh, sense. Fighting games should never, ever give you options. Like, unless it's like every fighting game needs to run at 60 FPS standard. Yeah. Yeah, 100% agree. Right, so anything else yeah. over the top of that is fine. But yeah, don't don't make us choose. It's like they did that with Dead or Alive. Yeah. Um, one of the last Dead or yeah. Alives. And I, so, I, I tried that and it just feels so shit playing. It, like, like there's here's the skipping mm. frames. Here's the thing about the PS5, right? In the video settings of the PS5 itself, you can have it set to always favor performance mode or frame rate mode, right? And that override has worked for 99.95% of all my games. I booted up, it says performance mode selected automatically. This demo didn't do that. Well, that's because really it's a demo, mate, right, isn't it? Yeah. Must well, be, well, well the be. weird thing is, right, so the thing that I was getting to about the my moan is, oh, obviously, man. when you're in in the demo and you go into the that mode where you go into the city, it takes ages to get there because you have to do all the tutorial bollocks. Well, you can't change your button mode or your graphical settings in the in the mode. You have to go back to the fucking main menu. So I had to go back to the main menu, change my button settings and the fucking graphic settings, and then redo 
all the fucking tutorial blocks oh, again. Oh, no. Yeah, and I was like, why am I doing this? Well, luckily, my boy was sitting next to me, and he was like, Daddy, can I do this? I said, yes. So I went and made a cup of tea while he was while, <laughs> while he did it for me. But, yeah, it was very frustrating. Um, yeah. So I hope they sort that out for the main game. But I think I like the game mode. I like um, that open city gunner and just gives a bit of something extra to it. I think it's fun. However... I don't see myself buying the game at launch purely because no. um, that month, is it June or July? June, July? I can't remember June. that. June. It's the first one it, out in June. Yeah, June's stacked, one. mate, already. So, What's yeah, it, it's going to be... Oh, yeah. Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. fucking... Uh, what else is out in June? There's something, it's something else. else as well. Isn't Zelda out in June? No, that's May next month. Oh, okay. Anyway, so I mean, I mean, I think it's fun, but I think for me personally, because I'm not massively into Street Fighter games anymore, I think it's more of a wait till it's in a sale for me personally. Uh, but I still think that new mode is fun, and I mean, I'm intrigued to see what the full game is actually like as well. Um, and the fact it's crossplay as well is 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 pretty cool. So, yeah. Mm. It I'm, might be I'm good for Street like, Fighter gamer nights like the good old days. I don't know. I'm hoping it uh, rekindles and removes a bit of the stain of Street Fighter Five, to be honest. Because well, it's how many the of worst these Street Fighter we've had? Like, well, how many of these? Well, how many characters are going to have as DLC? Do you think? They've already oh, announced the year year one pass. Uh... Because they can't launch fighting games with a full <sighs> roster anymore. See, that puts me right off. So. It's... Like so, if you're not into it like me, you might as well wait a year for the game of the year edition with all the fucking characters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ugh, yeah, because Akuma's coming. He's the final character that's coming. Right. What? Right. How is he not a normal character? Yeah, that's what I don't understand. Because they know he's a character people are going to want to play as, so they're going to hold him back to people, so people pay more money for him. And also with these basic move set as well, which is defaulted to, I think it might might make the online a bit harder if you're using the normal button mode because it makes the special moves a lot easier to pull off. Well, you, you obviously will choose. I doubt. Don't think you'll be um, put up against people using simple mode if you're. I hope using not, because that would be fucking that shit. Wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there's probably a way of telling as well. Like also, the, yeah. uh, or screen I hope stuff, so. Again, one of my only other slight downsides to it is as much as I kind of like this Tekken Force style attempts that they've done with it, mm -hmm. um, with the extra stuff where you make your character and everything, Yeah, your characters look nowhere near as detailed and well yeah. done yeah. as the actual main characters in the game. It's, yeah. A lot of games suffer from this when they allow you to create a character. Like, your character will always look less defined than the world they inhabit. Yeah, yeah, and no, I agree. That kind of a yeah, slightly yeah. off, like a bit of a, what do you call it? Yeah, it's a little slightly bit jarring, jarring, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, well, I didn't think that the character creator was that great, to be honest. It was, I think it was a little bit basic. It's reasonably okay. I mean, we are slightly getting there with like enabling people to a majority create what they maybe want to create, but mm. we're still not fully yet there yet. And other games do sort of like pretty damn good jobs of that. But at the end of the day, it's a fighting game first. That's an extra optional mode. So yeah, yeah. Well, I'm guessing that's. I mean, the thing is, though, I don't know because that that city mode. I can't remember the name of the fucking mode, but if well, it feels so. to. It feels to me that they're pushing it as the main mode of the game. I don't yes, know about you. Because people, yeah. yeah, because we we live in an age of people with like stupid like attention spans and stuff, and giving people an option to basically have an arcade mode in a fighting game doesn't register as a single player mode to a lot of people these days. Mm -hmm. They'll just be like, "No, that's just the multiplayer mode," but you're playing it against the computer. Yeah. That's yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they, they obviously thought, well, we'll add a, an actual proper thing. I mean, like Mortal Kombat's been doing it for a while, haven't they, with their yeah. like, challenge hours and all these kind of things. So they, they just thought, oh, we'll do something different ourselves. And 
fair play for them, like actually doing something along those lines. And yeah, you know, you can obviously go into the uh, online battle lobbies and actually play a lot of their old classic arcade games, don't you? Oh, that's quite cool. I didn't know about that. That's pretty yeah, you awesome. You can go in, in, into the lobbies and jump on their old arcade machines and play some of their old classic Street Fighters. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Oh, I think I think that's a cool idea. Yeah, so it sounds to me like the demo only had a real small slice of what the full mm, game has I mean, to offer. I was a bit gutted that they only let you muck around with Luke and Lumin Ryu mm. in the uh, in this. I was hoping they'd at least give us like a few more characters. I mean, there was more characters than that available to people back when they did the uh, closed betas back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Even if it was just for training mode or something, just so people could see what they play like and learn their moves and combos, etc. Mm, yeah, it would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh well, it's pretty cool. To, it's pretty cool to have them. Oh, the one thing I was going to bring up a minute ago um, was uh, how come this? I, I don't get this. It must be some sort of deal with Sony on this because. The, the the demo was only available on the PlayStation and nowhere else. Yeah, it's out it's and everything else. Coming out, yeah. yeah, it's coming out later. Um, yeah. Sony uh, part own um, Evo, Evo, don't they? The fighting game tournament thing. Right. So yeah, there's obviously stuff in there to do with that sort of back end. This is why, like, obviously a lot of fighting games generally always come to PlayStation platforms. Yeah. Okay. That's what was interesting. It seems to me like, like a lot of games seem to like have demos that are PlayStation exclusive or games are exclusive to PlayStation for six months to a year over other systems. Um, yeah, maybe the CMA should look into that. It's a little bit annoying. I mean, even I thought that Street Fighter wasn't coming to the Xbox. Until Sly pointed it out to me, they, they, like, they all do it. Sly, you can't just point at PlayStation. Yeah, and say I, that know, I know. They, they do it as well. Like they've it's done it with. Hot. Yeah, they're supposed to be doing it with um, Warhammer, aren't they? But that still hasn't even come out on console yet. But mm. I know PlayStation has to wait an extra year after the Xbox version comes out. Is that Dark Tide. That's it, Dark Tide. Yeah. Oh yeah, that console release of that got delayed, didn't it? It's, I don't even think it's going to come out on console, mate. To be honest. It's, I've purchased it. It's been up for pre-orders and that for a while, mm. but they obviously cancelled the release because there's apparently issues with the PC version when it came out. Mm. PC version uh, one's all right. Don't, don't, yeah. Weird. Anyway, um, we've talked enough about Street Fighter Six demo. Um, Sly. Um. Yeah. So I have started God of War Ragnarok. Um, oh, okay, nice. Pretty good so far. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not one of those people that fell in love with the first game. I just thought it was, like, fine. It was good. Mm. Um, some people really love those games. I don't know. I think it's fine. Uh, I do think it is a bit more of the same. Um, you know, the combat hasn't changed drastically. Uh, the story seems to be similar kind of stuff. Um, graphically, big step up from the... Uh, well, the first one on PS4 Pro um, looks good. Um, have also dabbled in a bit of remote play on the deck, and it works pretty well. So I don't know why I'd ever play it on there because you know on the TV it's 4K, but um, looks good. Uh, I don't know how much I can say about it. I've played maybe mm. three, four hours. I've sort of left the first zone you're in. I've, yeah. I've gone out of the snow into the kind of wetlands. Um, it's good. I don't know how long it is. Um, it's one of those games. So, some single player games I play in like one burst, and I'll just like knock it out in a week. This one I feel like I'll probably play like three hours a week for several weeks until it's done. Um, it's probably do about twenty five to thirty hours, mate. Oh fuck me! All right, I'm gonna play it in little bursts. I think. <laughs> because, well, I um. Yeah. Well, I started playing it. Oh, Fucking hell, feels like for most, most, probably about a month ago. I played it for about three hours. I got 
past that wetlandy bit or whatever. Um, yeah. And then I just haven't picked it up since. I just, I don't know. I love the yeah. first one. The first one I couldn't put down. I absolutely loved it. But this one, it's good. Don't don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I, I don't know. It, like other games have pulled me away. And usually if a game is really fucking good, it won't pull me away. Exactly. Uh, so I don't know, man. I, I don't as, know. as you say, it's more it of the same. But yeah, I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But I just think there's yeah. been a lot more better games out this year. So that pulled me away from it. Yeah. So. I think it's going to be my game that I play when I'm not on Dead Island with my friends. Uh, mm. I think so. It does do a weird thing where, where uh, even like 75% through the game is still throwing tutorials at you and new mechanics. Oh. Okay. And it's one of those, just don't try and... Because um, I know you like to... like try and do as much as the game as you want you have to listen to the i forgot his name the guy where you've just got a head on, on, yeah, yeah. on your thing he'll, yeah. Say, oh, yeah. he'll say things like oh we can't do this area yet kratos well come back later because there's a lot of places where you have to unlock certain weapons and which have abilities to get to areas so yeah you might i see a, the bow and arrow that let you blow up the stuff and yeah, yeah so it's like you have to the unlock point. your spear like maybe 70% through the game, and then you go back to this area and can get to the chest. So don't, like, try and, you know, rack your brain and think, why can't I get to that bit? Just try mainline through the main story. Yeah. And if you mm-hmm. and if after doing all that, there's usually a bit, like, I think you can go back and do all the side stuff if you want to. Yeah, he's but, given yeah. me a side quest at the moment to shut down some oil rigs or something. Yeah, That's I think I did I maybe... When I stopped two side quests one which they recommend you, you go on really early and another one by yeah. mistake and i was like i wonder eh. if that might be the one i'm on because he's like kratos can we please go and do this i feel really bad about what i set up and did can we go and undo it oh uh, yeah i can't be but fucked with that shit uh <laughs> yeah maybe i should not bother i don't know i don't yeah. <sighs> uh, i don't know what it is right it's it's a good game on all sort of technical levels i just don't want to play it all the time i don't know what it is mm. it's probably it's, the it's... same thing like i said it, you feel like you've played it before i feel yeah. like i've played it before i don't think it does enough differently from the first one yeah uh, similar but... thing i had with horizon forbidden west over uh, uh, yeah. mate, oh, that game i mean i, I, I really enjoyed the, the first one and then the second one i was just like i was bored i just forced myself to push through the main quest i was just like it felt like uh, an, uh, a Ubisoft game where there's just too much shit on the map. And I was just like, oh, fuck this. I'm just going to do the main story. I I have found that that game is far more enjoyable if you just do the main story. Yeah. Um, I also think... Maybe I'll just talk about it now. I played the DLC this weekend. Um, oh. I bought the oh, yeah. expansion and I played it through to completion. Um, and by to completion, I mean I did the five fucking main missions and I ignored all the side bullshit. Um, How much was I the DLC? The part, uh, it's twenty nine ninety five Australian dollars, what? so what, like fifteen About quid, fifteen or sixteen quid. Yeah. Oh, well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. reasonably Can, fine. Uh, yeah, the, sto- yeah, the story, the yeah. story is really good. It's a new area. Um, you, yeah, new characters and stuff, and it it kind of contributes further to that main story. It feels like it's mm. going to be somewhat important to the third one. Yeah. Um, Lance Reddick's in it in probably his last appearance in the franchise before he passed. Oh, that's good, so, man. yeah, he's, he's, I guess he must have finished it before, um, before he passed. He, yeah. We'd like he, to think we did. Sad hearing him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could have just uh, used AI to do his voice. You never I? know these days. Yeah. yeah I don't know. AI and he's not, not, he's not in it a super lot. It's kind of like the characters from the main game. So, so here's one caveat. You have to have finished the main game to do the expansion like it mm-hmm. will not unlock until you've done the main game yeah um so yeah he he like says oh you know we need you to go to this like island it's also set in uh los angeles which is kind of coincidental with dead island also being out this week mm-hmm. um but yeah the, the hollywood signs there and it's all like dilapidated and you're like hey i know what this is um but it's all like flooded so it's all like separate little islands um it's kind of more of the same again but 
I don't know. It keeps it interesting enough. I just did the main story. I blasted it in like six, eight hours. I don't know. It was easier than doing all the side bullshit. Mm. Um, I think the weakest part of that game is its combat. And I know people love the combat, some of them. I, yeah, I get frustrated I, with the combat. I get frustrated honest. with the combat. I had to wet the difficulty down because I find that I'm doing what I think is the right thing. I'm shooting the like components off. I'm looking at the weaknesses. And I feel like sometimes they just charge me and steamroll me and I'm dead. So mm. I whack the difficulty down. And I'm really glad I did because that final boss, even even on easy, is a bastard. But uh, you know what? I enjoyed my time with it. Um, I have uninstalled it. I have no urge to go and do all the side stuff either in the DLC or the main game. I have treated that game as it has a main story and it has a DLC story. I ignore all the side stuff, just like all of it. And it, it unless the side quest is like right in my face and I grab it, and I can do it in two seconds, I don't do it. Because it ha- it suffers from what I'd call, yeah, Ubisoft open world bloat. Yeah. There's too much stuff, so I just yeah. don't do any of it. Yeah. I just do the main story. It's like level requirement, level 35. I went in at like level 29. It was fine. It was fine. So ignore that shit. Um, how, how was yeah. the story, though? I mean, was it any good? No, no. In the in the yeah, the story was good. Like I feel like it's quite important for the third game. Um, uh, it carries on the plot of the the main game. Um, you're hunting down kind of people uh, that are kind of contributing to the main problems of the main game, without mm-hmm. spoiling it. Mm-hmm. So it's it yeah, you, you it's it, it's a direct continuation of the main game. Um, it feels pretty important. Mm-hmm. Um. It feels important, but it also feels detached in a way because your main characters from the base game they only speak to you over the comms. Um, right. You don't you don't see them in person except for Lance Reddick's character right at the start. He kind of sends you off on your mission, and then you hop on your your flying beast wing thing, yeah. and you fly oh, over to Los Angeles. Uh, Sunwing, yeah, and then it gets yeah, it gets right. shot it gets shot down, and then you're kind of marooned on lo- on the Los Angeles plateau, um, and you've got to like go work with the native people that are there to like help them shut down the towers that shoot down all the things so they can escape as well. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, it's good if you do do the main story. It's probably five six hours. Um, you should blow through it. That's what I did. Um. Because I like the story in those games. I think it's actually quite a fascinating world. Um, what, Horizon? Yeah, I like the story. Mm. Do you not? It's just I, all told I, by a bunch of blue like holograms. Yeah. yeah like the actual premise is good and everything. Um, yeah. Like I say, I've, I've only got through, I think, half of Forbidden West, or just over half of it. Yeah. Because I sort of just got bogged down with all the different bits and bobs, but. Um, uh, I don't know. There's like some of the characters I like, but I generally find the main character to be a bit of an annoying bitch. Like just <laughs> miserable, miserable well... bent. Like and like, yeah. I, I get that the person that she's supposedly a clone of was pretty much the same way. Yeah, but it's almost like. Uh, I don't know. As a protagonist, I just find her pretty uninteresting and annoying compared to all of the other people that she ends up sort of like. Look, I definitely meeting. find the best character in the in either game is Sightlands, played by Lance Reddick. So it's going to be pretty sad when the third game doesn't have him. <laughs> because I, I feel like he guy carries with the franchise. mohawk and the big fluffy beard. He's he this one. one. Um, he was in the second one. Yes, uh, he's not. He's not in the DLC. Or... I can't remember what his name was. Yeah, from WWE is his name. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. So like, none of the main cast except for Lance Reddick's character, uh, Silence. None, none of them are in the DLC. Um, you are, for all intents and purposes, like isolated from them. Some of them c- chime in on the comms, but uh, for the most part, you're on your own. Um, and you just I think it was a similar way, wasn't it? In uh, uh, yeah, the Frozen, Frozen Wilds. Wilds. Yeah, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was just you. You you talk to Silence on the comms, but that was it. So we get so, an electric boogaloo DLC for um 
the third game, do you reckon? Considering they all seem to be based on stuff. So you've had like ice and fire. I think lightning will be about the only thing they haven't done yet. Oh yeah, maybe. Um, I think they are going to do a third game. Oh, I was getting. Oh, sorry, I haven't mentioned. So the re- this expansion is only on PS5, right? And they said that's because the PS4 couldn't handle it. Yeah, I agree with them having played it yeah. because the final boss fight has you must use so many resources, and the PS5 doesn't drop a single frame during that whole time. It's actually kind of astounding. But the final boss, I mean, it's a bunch of really big machines, and it, it, the game handles it perfectly fine on PS5. I would imagine that a base PS4 would just explode try to play it. Mm. So. So I, I get why it's not on the last gen. I mean, it kind of sucks if you picked it up on last well, gen. Well, to be fair, they need to still bring it out stuff up, on the last gen now, anyway. It's been a couple it's of years. Been, yeah, it's been, it's been three years. You've had your time. Fucking, yeah. You know, get with the times. Um, the Final Fantasy VII Remake DLC, that was on um, PS5 only as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah I, haven't, I haven't played that still, the DLC. That's good. Yeah, I've still got to finish Crisis Core. But um, no, so I, I get why it's not on last gen. Um, it's pretty resource intensive. The uh, like the fights. So looks great, by the way. I think it looks better than the base game somehow. The expansion. I guess they've mm. used like different lighting techniques or something on on the new area. But mm. I think it looks better than the base game. And the base game looked really good already. Yeah. And I'm playing performance Base game mode. to me is, is, is one of those games where you just think, you, you know, and obviously, I know it's the engine they're using, but you'll get things yeah. like Gotham Knights where they're like, oh, we can't get this to run at, like, HDR or, or should I say, like, yeah. um, Super HD with, like, 60 FPS. And then you look at, like, something like Forbidden West, which runs at, like, 1440, 60 FPS, and has, like, one yeah. of the most beautiful, massive open worlds ever in a game. Yeah. You just think, yeah. 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 Sort it out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Change Gotham Knights was on sale for console. Gotham Knights was on sale this week at one of my local stores for $9 new. And I was oh, like... It's worth that. It, it's I was, yeah, worth but, that. yeah, yeah, but, honest, but you'll, you'll Darren, I'm an FPS. Yeah. I'm an FPS snob. I won't play it. It's at 30 FPS on console. I won't play it. <laughs> I'll play it on PC where it's 60 FPS or more. Uh, I'm an F- I'm an FPS snob. I was I literally looked at it and I was like nine dollars. Now nah, not playing it at 30 FPS. Uh, <laughs> Got standards. So it's going to so, be interesting to see how well Redfall does like after that all came out. I think the I, general people. Don't give a fuck, to be honest. I really don't. I think it's just kind of the Twitter and social media people making a big thing of it. I do think general gamers do not care. Well, I really do it, think that. But it, it screwed Gotham Knights, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, but maybe it was just a shit game. I don't know. I've not played it. It's a, reason, it's a reasonable game. I've heard it's, it's fun. pretty no decent. Been, it's yeah. just like that, that, I think, just put a shitload of people off. But me mm. off. I like think I it put a load Batman. of people off the fact it was a Batman game without Batman. Oh, I mean, that's what put it, more briefly. people off. Yeah. But yeah, I, th- I, I mean, I like 60 frames per second, and when you get used to it, I see what you mean. But like I say, the majority of people, I don't think they give a shit or even know Well, there was a survey done after the Redfall news came out, and it was like, what do you play... I think mean, it was a very informal survey, but it was like, what do you play at? And it was like, I ju- there was an option that was like, I don't look at the graphics settings, I play whatever the default is. And that was like a good percentage of people. And I was like, yeah. really? <laughs> you don't immediately go to settings and go enable performance mode? Because I do that for every game. No, this is my one, <laughs> one of the things you've always got to realise is humanity is actually more stupid than you think it is. <laughs> Yeah, but I still I think as long why. as it's a locked six, thirty or sixty, it doesn't make that much. Yeah, of a the, well, the problem with Gotham at launch is it wasn't locked thirty. It is now. It's had some patches. But... Yeah, I think that dropped down to like t- like twenties as well. So it's like mm. yeah, 
It's just badly optimized. I think mm. even on PC they struggled with 60 in places, didn't they? Mm. Yeah, that's they've they've ironed it all out now. Apparently it's patched yeah. and it works really well. I think a lot of people, if you showed them on a thing, it's like, is this running at 30 or is this running at 60? They wouldn't notice a difference, but they would notice if the game started to slow down. Oh, you know, you, you notice oh, instantly. Oh, I'd know. Oh, I'd know. You start panning a camera around. <laughs> That's why I stuff. said most normal people. I don't trust <laughs> <as> normal webby. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're 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 digressing. Where where what were yeah. we talking about? Re um, uh, well, I was talking about for Horizon Forbidden West. So uh, yeah, the so, uh, burning shores. Darren, deals, Darren yeah. you want to talk about a game? Uh, I, I think we've level. pretty much covered most of the stuff I've played already. Like Dead Island Two was the sort of thing I was yep. pretty much looking forward to, and obviously yeah. the Street Fighter Six demo. I like what I played. I'll be picking it up um, mm -hmm. unless there's no other horrible news about it before it comes out. But nowadays they usually dump shit on people after the games come out, and you've already spent your money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. So. Been playing the also the usual shite, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, Sniper Elite Five. I've actually played a fair bit more of, to be honest. Single player still. Uh, yeah, single player all the way. Um, best okay. best way to play games mainly. Um, I'm up to I think it's the fifth mission now. Just did the one in the the War Factory. Where you have to sabotage a load of um, like refineries and stuff like that to stop them producing weapons of war and such. Mm. Uh, it's still really enjoying it. It's very, um, like I said before, you can get quite in depth with it. Because uh, it's strange. I was speaking to a mate about it who, when I was talking to him, I'd started playing it again. He was all like, oh, I might have to reinstall that. Because he loves those games and like hitman and all that kind of stuff yeah and i did say to him i can see a lot of similarities between this and hitman because it's like all about the gear you take out with you yeah like yeah. how um the rain uh the audio range of the weapons will affect what you take out as well because you obviously don't want to take out loads of stuff that's proper loud if you're trying to stealth about because it'll attract enemies to your location yeah. But then you can like lay booby traps and set set stuff up to draw people out towards things to blow up and whatnot. Mm. It's it's a good lot of fun and like, if it's still on Game Pass, you, you might as well try it out if you haven't. Yeah, I mean, I rinsed it with Peeps, um, but I was, I was ages ago, so I don't really remember the specifics anymore because it was a while ago now. Some of the levels are really well designed. They're fucking massive. Like, yes, yeah, they're pretty big, especially, uh, is it the third level that's basically like the college? It's almost yeah. like a castle on an island. Yeah. There's all these different layers to it, and there's back entrances and side alleys, and you can get in through different rooms. and mm. Just like I said, like very well-made game, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And it's like I said, it's, it's just the first... First of the open world, we'll say, uh, styled sniper elite games that aren't just like make your way from A to B, kill everything on the way. Yeah. Kind cool. Yes, yeah, good. It is a good game, man, for sure. Mm. And you can pick it up fairly cheap. I mean, I got it for about 20, 25 quid. That's not too bad at all. Is it cool? Cool. Uh, yeah. That thing I mentioned, yeah. Oh mate. Uh, okay. Well, I'm gonna uh, talk about very briefly um, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins. So uh, I was playing it in carp with Hurricane, which is one of the reasons I bought it. But he's kind of like just vanished off the face of the earth. So if you're listening, Hurricane, shame on you. So hammer in the six. I know. So um, obviously because I've been playing it with him and he'd just been destroying the enemies. Um, because you know, if you're high, if you if you're a high level and you jump into someone else's game, you you just it's like having a cheat mode activated. You just fucking destroy everything. So I was a little bit under leveled on gear and stuff, so I was struggling even on easy um, playing it on single player. So funnily enough, there was a Facebook advert for Stranger of Paradise on PC, 
And I saw in the comments people talking about, you know, about, about the game. And one guy said, oh, I've got it on Xbox if anyone needs a hand. So I messaged him on Xbox. Uh, I think it might have been like um, Tuesday or Wednesday. And and then he replied. So I said, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, we can play now. So we got to party and um, we pretty much banged through a fuckload of the game in co-op. And I said, thank you very much. You know, awesome, awesome. I've got, got a load of really good gear because we put it on the hardest mode where the loot drops are better. Um, so I got a lot of good loot. So um, so we did that. And I said, thank you very much. We left. And then I played a little bit more single player the next day. And I was actually having a, a decent time with it because my gear was better. So this is the thing about Stranger Paradise. I think this is a sort of game that Darren would probably like um, because it's set out... It, it it's a prequel to the original Final Fantasy game. Um, I'm not going to say anything else because the end. I mean, I already know the end because I've had it spoiled. Well, um, I know how the story yeah. goes. Anyway, it's yeah. the classic. Yeah. I don't really want to say it, but it's yeah. 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 So anyway, um, I feel like I'm right near the end of the game because I've had some really long cutscenes and. Um, yeah, things are happening, and and to Is be Lord honest, of Shadow a bit of a spoiler. Nah, nah. <laughs> you get what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. not not to give much away for those people that haven't played it, but I think it's a really good game. Um, even playing it on your own, it's it, it's good. I mean, I've enjoyed it more in co-op like I do with most games, but if you're playing it single player, you have your like the character you still have the other two characters with you that ai anyway and they're pretty decent but the thing about the game is there's so much loot drops it's it's like a borderlands game with all the loot um and there's about 20 something fucking different classes to play as so the way you play it is at the beginning there's like i don't know about eight classes available and their max level is 30 so you max up a class, so you've got like mage, red mage, dark mage, fucking knight, warrior, you know, all these different fucking classes. And you max and you max rank them out, and then you just equip another one. So you can have two equipped at once. Uh so you just press the Y button to switch between them very quickly. Uh, which is good. So like for different fights and stuff like that. Um it's it's it, you know, it's good. Um yeah, so and and but there's a thing like the guy who I was gaming with, George, and we were saying, look, you can like once you've maxed them out and you've got all your characters and all that, you can mess with the build. So it's all about building your character, like with different weapons and armors and stuff like that. And like this apparently there's some real like OP builds that people have made up online that that found out and they're sharing them online and stuff. So you can really, you know, cheat the system in a way. But I like the way the game is set out because it's, you know, it's uh, like there's a world map and you literally just click on the next mission to go to and you go and do it and you kind of teleport there and there's loads of side missions. But it's basically just a beat em up game like with the Dark Souls kind of controls where you use the RB and right trigger for the, like the light and hard hits and you have like your LB is your block. Um, you know, and you have some magics and stuff assigned to your D pad that you can do and and stuff. And as a fighting game, like as you go on around just beating the fuck out of enemies, it's really well done, man. It's so much fun. I mean, you you could go through this game without even paying any attention to the story and still have a really good time. But obviously, because it's a Final Fantasy, I like to watch all the cutscenes and figure out what's going on with all the characters and all that and. Yeah, I, I actually think it's a really good of what happened before Final Fantasy One because as we as some of you may know, um the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters are out now on console. Uh well, apart from Xbox. Um so it's on PC, Switch and PlayStation. Um so obviously for those people that are playing through those games again, you know, Stranger Paradise is a good way to see you know the the prequel to the first game because they they they've actually done a really good job job with the with the pixel remasters, but 
It's just really, again, it's another game that hasn't come to Xbox, which we'll dig into a little bit later with uh, Conversation Piece, I've got. Anyway, Stranger Paradise is really fucking good. Even if you're not a Final Fantasy fan, it's a lot of fun. Uh, check it out. It's like 20 quid now. Um, yeah, it's good fun. Anyway, I'll shut up now and uh, we'll move on to Nick. Yeah, so um, yeah, stop talking about Final Fantasy. I've been playing Crisis Core Final Fantasy Seven Reunion. Good man. <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah, we've had. I mean, we talked about this on and off for years, and we were being all sorts of specials, saying how we wanted this to be ported to consoles, and they did. And like I said, yeah. I mean, I've got, I still got it on the PSP. I never beat it on PSP. I don't know. I don't know if I got stuck or whether they changed the difficulty or something. But mm. I just, I think maybe I just got stuck, and then something else came out because you know back then it's just like oh new game buy the new game ignore the old one yeah things like that but i mean i've been hammering this i think i've done about 15 hours in a week wow yeah and only about four hours maybe five hours of that is the main story i've just been hitting the missions yeah off the thing yeah and like i said i think i was on chapter three of 11 which i think is the normal thing and I'm already on like level 35 because I just kept replaying it, like whilst I was doing stuff, you know, like off because like mm, on stream mm. I've been playing the main, you know, the story, but off stream I've just been doing these missions, which yeah. is fun. But then I go through the main campaign and it starts up, you know, activating combat mode, yes. oh, yeah, all dead, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one hit killed everything. But I mean, it's really, I mean, it looks good. I mean, they've. You know, 4K HD'd up all the graphics from the PSP and you know, the main game. But if you did, they, I don't think they've done anything to the cutscenes though that were from the mm, PSP. No, I mean, they, may, may, when... they may up res them ever so slightly, but obviously they weren't going to re render all the games, yeah, yeah, you know, in because I think that costs a lot more, but they're still pretty good, aren't they? I think Even so. For I PSP, mean, for 2000, mm. what, seven on a PSP. Yeah. Yeah, well, 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 the thing is, right, I think, like, the game design, as you're playing it, like, especially with those side missions and stuff, you can tell it was designed for a handheld, you know, yeah, for short bursts of play, because basically, yeah. for those of you that haven't played it, there's, like, in at the save points, you can select to do side missions, and there's fuckloads of them, and the more you do, the yep. more you unlock, and you get more items, and obviously you, you upgrade your levels and all that. So just sharp, quick levels, just blasting through for enemies and a boss at the end. Um, definitely designed for a handheld. And I, yeah, I spent fucking loads of time doing that because it's it's the, it is the best way of leveling up your character. Yeah, yeah I'm on chapter five. We used to level up, didn't we, Webby? Like that's mm. that's how you used to do in JRPGs, and and mm. I think most of them now or most games. Like the whole thing level levels up with you, so it's kind of pointless leveling up. Mm, mm. Well, what were you saying, Sly? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm on chapter five, um, yeah. but I was getting my ass kicked by a boss, so I probably haven't done enough of those little missions. I'm probably under leveled, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna have to load a save back, um, go in and do some of those, grind up, and then fight the boss again. I reckon. But yeah, yeah, I'm on Chapter 5. I bought it for the PC uh, before Christmas, started playing it, and then, of course, I moved, and my PC was in transit for, like, a month and a half, so um, couldn't play it. Although, it is Steam Deck verified, so I might pick it up again and uh, carry on with it. It probably yeah. suits a handheld quite yeah, well, given it was well on PC. that, mate, because it was built for handhelds. You could do the loads yeah, of the well, missions. Yeah, it is verified, yeah. Yeah, just do loads of the missions from a save point. And then yeah. once you've got your PC already, oh, I've got it back now. I've got yeah, it back. but I mean, once you're in the mood, yeah. like go through the main story on like the biggest. Yeah, 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 yeah. But true. yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me, where is the music and going to the areas you did. Oh yes, in seven. Yes, I mean, we, we have we have seen some of the areas like done with Final Fantasy VII remake. You know, in nicer graphics compared to the old PS One. Mm you know, puppets top-down type thing. But some yeah. of these areas, you know, like Nibelheim and places like that and just the music and you're like, oh, and I'm not sure, because I was, I, was, I was a bit confused because I started off, because you play as Zack, don't you? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's confusing. I don't know if they've changed the, because um, I haven't beat this yet, 
whether they've changed the ending of this no, game. No, it's so exactly the same. Yeah, so that's weird because remake is messed with this game and seven in it. Like, yeah, what is supposed to happen? Um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, I'm what not is... sure because Sephiroth's a good guy at the moment. He hasn't turned bad yet. Mm. And then there's another bloke called Genesis, and I was like, oh, so you're redhead Sephiroth, are you? And he's got Genesis one wing is as well. Basically, Sephiroth's trigger, his voice in his ear, basically uh, sending him down down the path. Mm. But yeah, it's got, like I said, it's going into a bit more of what happened because all of I won't say all of this bit, but a lot of this was just like a flashback in Seven, wasn't it, Webby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and if I'm when you go and everything's on fire and basically Sephiroth loses his shit because he yeah. finds out, you know, what 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 he is and what happened to him and things like that. And it's just weird because it, it jumps forward a bit of time as well. Because I'm playing as Zack and I was like, hey, where's my Buster Sword? I've got a Buster Sword on the front cover. I haven't got it. And this other bloke called Angel's got it. And I'm like... I want you to die so I can have the Buster Sword. And um, <laughs> I was like, oh, so I've got my Buster Sword now. And But yeah, it's just, it's kind of addictive. The gameplay, it is simple, you know, like yeah. a hack and slash type thing. But it's nice how you can link stuff up and you've got like ability points which do certain moves and magic points which do another moves. And it's that old seven where, you know, you get your materia and the more you use it and the more like experience you get you level up the materia as well yeah yeah so like i said by chapter three i'd already had like curaga and level three materia and stuff like that so i'm really overpowered excellent so probably oh, yeah. the opposite of you so i just you know extreme am i am i right in thinking part two of seven remake is out in like december or november this year it's oh, gonna get know. It's going to get delayed, say, but it's They officially. say winter, but winter can run through to the end of February next year. Well, it's oh, right. It, I mean, a lot of the websites say they've got it, like, December 31st, yeah. which is a placeholder. They, they, that's not coming out this year. No, I don't think, I don't it think it's going to be needed. Yeah, you, you can't so be coming out anyway. They're going to make four, a lot of money later. off 16. You've yeah, got there's no Spider-Man way. is, like, the big game at the end of the year as well. That's oh. going to be... They haven't shown anything of Spider Man. And it's oh. due out in September or something. Yeah, yeah. It? So there was a tweet that kind of went out this week. I don't know if people saw it. Um, kind of changing tracks a little bit. But someone was hassling the, their Twitter team, going, Oh, is your game's going to get delayed. You haven't shown anything. There's been like a 30 second trailer for it like a year ago. They're like, we're still cooking away. Just give us a little time. It's going to be really good. And they're like, is it getting delayed? And they're like, it will come out in full 2023. It will come out. So mm. I think they're ramping up to it. I was hearing a stat today that they haven't done a PlayStation showcase in nearly two years. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Do they like, need they, to? Um, we know what it is. Plays, it's Spider-Man. We don't, they don't yeah, really yeah, need to see But they haven't it. done a... Sure. Yeah, I guess. But if you want to show off your new graphics and whatever, you know, your PS5 optimization, you know, get. but people are hyped for it. People are going to buy it day one anyway. Yeah, it's fine. It's definitely going to be shown off during their thing, this, like, E3 period. Yeah, no, supposedly they're going to do a showcase next month, I think. So, uh. yeah, that's weird, right? Because, yeah, e- E3's gone, but everyone's doing their own E3 on the same week anyway. Everyone's yeah. doing their own as they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Why would Starfield they spend tens of June? millions it's of June, pounds to go yeah. to LA to or the the conference for it, not, not the game? Yeah, but I don't it's, know. It's to, yeah, to Sony hasn't YouTube done a conference or a, a yeah. showcase in like six hundred days. Was the number I saw thrown around? So mm. hopefully we see some of Spider Man and maybe some Final Fantasy VII Part Two as well. That came out in 2020, the first one, first part. Are you sure? I thought it was 2019. No, it was 2020. It came, it came out during the, the lockdowns. Started. Yeah. yeah. It was my lo- one of my lockdown we, games. A lot of us that had ordered the physical copy got it like about almost two weeks early, didn't we? <laughs> no. Because they started shipping them out earlier to obviously get around the uh, restrictions, COVID and that. Oh, yeah. Right, anything yeah, else on this before we move on? Because time is a ticking. 
Well, who, who, who's next? Was it, Me. was it just Nick? Oh, right, Sly. Well, you might as well um, t- tell us about your Steam Deck, mate, because you've already hit oh, it talked about it already. I was saving it. I was going to... Well, now we're at the point where I think, yep, no, all of these games I've played on the deck now, so I could probably lump some of these together a bit. Maybe the ones yeah. I've played more, I'll talk about them on their own, but yeah. some ones I've played a bit of. Um, Persona 4, I know you've played it recently as well. Maybe we should talk about that one. Yeah. Um, um, so what I've, are you playing it on? Because I've, I've played been... it on everything. <laughs> I've been hammering it, mate. Absolutely hammering yeah. it this past week. Yeah, so I've been playing it on Xbox and my PC. Um, yep. A lot. A hell of a lot. So to this, this I woke up this morning and I played a little bit. Um, and I have actually feel like I think I've beaten the final boss of the game. Ooh. Um, yeah, but I know I've checked a walkthrough guide and I've still got like three months to go. But what? I think it's uh, yeah, so I think it's just like wrapping up story stuff and and bits and pieces. So um, yeah, I'm nowhere near as far as you. Yeah. I think I've done one or two palaces. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so so because basically the game is obviously a, a, a lot of it's about is maxing out your relationships with everybody and all that jazz. Uh, my 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 character has a girlfriend. And when you max out the relationships with the other girls, you have a choice to like have more than one girlfriend. But I've been good and faithful to you, Kiko. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to give away anything because the story, there's a massive story twist and it's fu- fucking amazing. My jaw's on the floor. Um, and the reason I've been hammering it so much is just because it is that much of a great game. I've just wanted to know what fucking happens in the story. Um, and... And yeah, so I've beat the final boss and uh, I've just got stuff to do of three, three months to go before the end of the game. And I think that'll fly by quite quick, but I've really enjoyed it. But I'm so glad I put it on easy because even on easy, oh, yeah. like it, like, that, it's one of the reasons I never finished it on the PS Vita it was just because I found it too hard. Yeah, I started it on normal and very quickly switched it down to easy. Yeah, so I uh, it's I'm really like five six hours in one dungeon area if you're playing even on the normal level. Well, on easy they're not because of the, the 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 problem is you can't save it. So you ha- yeah. when you go into a dungeon, you have got to dedicate the time. Um, yeah, that's the you big could, like, problem with it. Spend or quick resume or leave your console on. Or, or you could leave but... the dungeon, I suppose, and then and then go back and save. But then you know, it's just a bit annoying, but. I remember um, playing it on the Vita, and I have, like when the battery almost ran out, and I just keep plugging it in and leave it yeah. plugged in overnight because I didn't want to like lose my progress. So you yeah. just put it on suspend yeah. mode or whatever on yeah. Vita, can't you? But yeah, because um, you could do that on consoles, though, couldn't you? Yeah, but not on PC. You can't, mate. And it's, you know, unless you just leave it paused. But um, I, I, I think it's a great game, and I'm really gutted I never finished it on the Vita now because I know. Obviously, Colin finished it on the Vita and was always banging on, oh, I can't believe you never finished it. It's really good. And that was years ago. Fucking years yeah. ago. Um, it's a great game. And, and, you know, I'm so glad it came to Game Pass because it's given me that, that opportunity to rinse through it properly and actually play it to, to the end. I guarantee you I will finish it this week, completely finish it. Ooh, lovely. So, yeah, it's really I... good. Uh, I, I am maybe f- three or four hours in oh, and I feel like I might want to, <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And I feel like I might want to start over because I don't oh. know. I just feel like some of the relationship stuff, I don't know if there's like an optimized order to be doing it in or something no, to be maxing I it don't out. Think so. I don't know. I feel Honestly, I yeah, just... with these type of games, just play it how you want to play. Yeah. Because yeah. if you get... That that's kind of the whole point for what you you know what you choose yep. and who you pick to be your friends. Yeah. If you try and do everything, you know, with you know fear you of missing can't. out, you'll yeah. end up just. You know, I don't think you can do everything on one playthrough. No, there's that, not you enough know, time. Up everybody's the, things. No, and, no, you can't. No. Yeah, so it's just just play it, mate. Just enjoy it. One of the that's... things I don't like about the Persona games is the constant pushing time system. Yeah, well, I quite yeah, like it, but like it, you can't when the, when the fogs, 
you have to go into the palace before the fog sets in. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I did. I did the first. I've done the first one. I think because there's one where you go into the TV world and it's just like the tutorial of what the TV world is, and then you actually do a palace. So I think I've done the first palace. Um. Mm. Yeah, it's good. I don't know. Trying to figure out what to do after school is kind of awkward. Um, I've I've joined the basketball club, so yeah, uh, building relationships there. Um, I try and read a lot of books to increase my knowledge. Yeah, um, if you run into town, you can bump into your mates a lot of the time and hang out with them as well. Yeah, yeah, I've done a few of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how how. Oh, I was going to say, I've, so I've played it on the Series X uh, through yeah. Game Pass, and I've also played it on the Steam Deck through yes. cloud gaming. And I and it it runs, I no, it runs really well. And I think it's because it's not that intensive of a game. Mm. I haven't had any lag, any input delay, any kind of drop frames or anything like that. Um, so, which is good, because that means with xCloud, I can play it wherever. Um, yeah. So that means if I go away on a trip or whatever this year and I got my deck with me, I can keep on grinding Persona. Um, so, um, and it's on a handheld too. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, let's knock off Persona because I've talked about it a lot anyway. Tell yeah, me about yeah, the sure. Steam Deck because uh, that's what myself, I'm keen to learn more about it. And I'm sure our listeners are keen to learn about this, yeah. this machine because there's only a few people in the community who've got it. So, yeah. And uh, I want to start off by giving a shout out to Red Tone who walked me through uh, some issues I was having, but it was uh, it was a very unique problem I set up for myself with some cables, and I was trying to figure out the best combination. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I bought a portable monitor for it this week. Um, you could power it entirely with USB C, and also display the video with one USB C cable, um, which is nice. So with the deck, I mean, the games on it are good. There's there's different classification tiers. You've got verified, playable, untested, and unsupported. Unsupported means Valve has looked at it and it like will not work. Um, there's not that many of those, in all honesty. Most games on here will run. Um, it's games with anti-cheat that the deck doesn't like. Because I guess it's a Linux machine, and Linux isn't officially supported for some games, like COD. Like, you have to dual-boot Windows to play right. COD on this. Right. Um, but for the most part, most games will work. Um, I get varying degrees of performance out of most games. So I'm playing Sleeping Dogs as we speak, and it's running at a delightful locked 60 frames per second. Which um, Steam Deck have you got, mate? Cause there's like, I got the 512 three... gigabyte model, the top Is that one. The... Best one with the best screen yeah. as well. Well, it's got the anti glare, so um, yeah. yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, nice. I got the anti glare one. I got 512 gigabytes on it internal, and I've also thrown a one terabyte micro SD uh, in there as well. So I've got a total of one and a half terabytes in this thing. Um, battery life varies per game. The more intensive it is, the faster it drains. Uh, Sleeping Dogs is. Yeah, I've got about three hours out of Sleeping Dogs. So that seems to be kind of the what average I know benchmark. Is, Sly, what's the screen like? Because you've bought a, a a monitor for it, but the whole point of a Steam Deck is no, to yeah, right. play it as a proper handheld. Yeah, so I've, but I've not, I don't use the screen all the time. The screen is for when I go away and I want to have a little setup. Um, mm, it's okay. for travel. Cause, cause so, at, so in September, I'm going away for three months, and the Steam Deck... And maybe the Switch, if I have room, will be the only things I've got. So oh, yeah. being able to plug USB-C into those and hook them up to a little screen means I can, you know, yeah, Bluetooth no, I mean, the controller yeah. and sit back and play it. But like, that's not the way I'm going to play it for the most part. For the yeah. most part, I'm playing it in handheld. Mm. Um, but, it, yeah, so the the screen itself, the colors are good. It It is 800p at a ratio of 16 by 10. Um so it's a bit it's like a slightly wider image. Mm. Um, most games don't have 16 by 10 support. They're 16 by 9. So some games have little black bars on the edge. Not, not overly noticeable. Um, some games do have native 16 by 10 support. Sleeping Dogs is one of those games. So it looks fantastic. Um, 
I have found that the amount of community support on the Steam Deck is fantastic as well. Um, if you go to like, the Steam Deck Reddit, there's people giving tips in there all the time. Uh, there's also yeah, a couple of people in our community have got them. Uh, Hurricane's got one, Red Tone and uh, Dodo. So it's good to talk to them about different things they've tried on it. Um, I have installed emulators on it, so it can run any console from, oh, I mean, the first consoles all the way through to, it can run Switch. It can run Switch games. Um, well, it easy, can I mean, run, it's like yeah. quite massively more powerful than yeah. the Switch, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It yeah, can run Switch games. If you games. get like, hacked versions of a lot of the Nintendo games, you can actually run them at like better frame rates. Yeah, so Nintendo Breath of the games. Wild yeah, runs at 60 FPS now. Um, so funnily enough, one of the games I traded this week uh, to get Dead Island was Breath of the Wild because I was like, well, I'll just fucking download it on the deck at 60 FPS then, why not? Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I Dirty kind of have pirate. less reason. <laughs> yeah, shush. I, I finally got over to the dark side. I have less reason to yeah buy single player Nintendo games now because mm. for the most part, not all of them, but most of them you can download on the deck and yeah, they'll run. Uh, yeah. as well as the switch or better yeah. um so i've got uh yeah so as far as emulators go i mean it can do as far as it can do 360 uh with varying degrees of success uh and ps3 as well like you know a good number of games will work from both not all but most um and then it can do switch as well but it can also do ps2 ps1 Dreamcast. So I've downloaded a shed load of games. Uh, I've got like good, good few GameCube games in there. I've got PSP. Did you know they remade the first Tomb Raider, but for PSP with like HD graphics? Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, they have PS2 <laughs> and 360 as well. Yeah, you can do PS2, P360. Yeah. yeah, it's Tomb Raider Anniversary. Oh yeah, well it's got that on there, so I've been playing that a little bit. It's good. Um. I don't know, it just works seamlessly, like the Steam Cloud, like it just like pulls your save game, you can go between the console, oh, between the between the deck and between the PC, um, it's seamless, your saves are there. Uh, it has compatibility for games that don't have Linux support, it's called Proton, you just, it auto detects and it'll boot and it'll run. Um, I'll, I'll blow through some of the games, maybe I haven't put as much time into. Well, can into you just tell then... me a little bit yeah, about the... Um actual game as well like the actual um system sorry like how you find in it with comfort the screen oh the yeah battery life. I, I like it i yeah so i like it a lot more than the switch um sorry switch of <laughs> nintendo switch i've been bashing it a bit but the <laughs> it's wider i've got big hands so i like that it's wider because mm -hmm. i it, it feels more comfortable in my hands i've always felt a switch cramps my hands because it's too small so it's wider. I think the weight's good. Uh, the speakers on it are pretty good. Uh, the screen, like, it, you know, it looks solid, you know. There's mm -hmm. good colored depth and stuff. Um, it's battery it's life. almost twice as much as the Switch. You know, be fair. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Um, your battery life, your, your mileage may vary. It depends on what you're playing. If you're playing something graphically intensive, your battery life might be two, maybe three hours. If you're playing something over cloud or emulated or not that intensive you can get maybe five hours out of it some some games i've seen the tracker say six so you, you i'd say six hours is the absolute most you'll get on it right. um that's not bad though. if you're playing if, you know it's pretty good if you're playing yeah anything newer than the 2010s i'd say you're probably getting three hours right. um okay. i i was playing star wars jedi on it um that that was my first game I completed on it. Um, loved Star Wars Jedi, by the way. I never finished it originally, oh. so it was nice to finish it. So I've bought Survivor now um, on the Xbox um, for this one. But, the yeah, it plays really well on the deck. I was getting... Once again, your frame rates and stuff will vary. I, I've i seen someone online said they did get 60 FPS on Jedi if they tweaked down the settings and made it look crap. But I was playing at a locked 45, and that plays fine on a handheld it looks fine um didn't didn't notice it really that mm, much so that's good playing at lock lock 45 uh played through all the jedi like 15 hours loved it um 
really good game, Jedi Fallen Order. I mean, I don't know what happened. I played it at launch and never finished it on the PlayStation. But the map was trash. Yeah, that that was part of it. But everything else was good. <laughs> yeah, no, very excited for the new one. But yeah, no, I played through the whole thing on the deck. I never found the controls to be like problematic. I I thought I would find the button placements and the stick placements weird because they're mm. not. The sticks are. Par- like they're parallel to each other they're not offset like the xbox controller but honestly yeah. that makes it's fine because that yeah. means your thumb is right next to the buttons mm-hmm. um but yeah like it, it the weight's good the button placement's good yeah battery life kind of fluctuates based on what you're playing like jedi i think i was getting like three hours out of it um but you can play while it's hooked into a cable or whatever anyway um and in my case i bought that portable screen so i can dock it in my little dock I bought off Amazon and charge it mm. and then play with a controller on the screen. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, the emulators are good. Like, I've been playing a bit of Simpsons Hit and Run on the PS2. Um, pretty much every emulated game I've played runs it uh, like a locked 30 or 60, depending on what the kind of the limitations on the game are. For mm. the PS2, it seems to be most games are 60, which is nice. Um, and it up-reses those images pretty well as well if you dock it to a screen. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I might, might just bash out some of the games I've played on it. Um, yeah, sure. So yeah, like I said, I played Jedi Fallen Order to completion, um, like the entire thing on the deck, 15 hours solid. Didn't have a problem with it at all. It was fantastic. Loved it. Quantum Break. Now, mm. this one... This one, it was having. I was having some issues at first, but then they released the compatibility patch for like all games, like the next version of their compatibility software, and that right. that sorted me out. So it was all good. Um, the only thing is, with playing Quantum Break on the deck, it skips the the TV episodes because they're streamed. Oh. It's it's only because it's streamed, and also mm. apparently that happens on the Game Pass for. PC version, although that's been pulled because of licensing stuff. It, you can't actually buy Quantum Break at the moment. Um, uh, uh. But but it won't stream those cutscenes, uh, those those like TV episodes. That's the only thing I had with it, but that's because oh, it's weird. streamed and it, it doesn't like that. But that's, that's a quirk very specific to Quantum Break of all games, not just the deck. That's just a Quantum Break problem. Um... No, that Quantum Break, though, I got that running at, like, a lock 60. That was delightful. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it runs better than it does on the Xbox, funnily enough, because on the Xbox, it's capped at 30. Yeah. So it actually plays better better on the deck, because it's a PC. Um, no, I loved Quantum Break. It's. Uh, I really hope they make another one. I don't think it did very well, though, so probably not. It did okay. But, I think that's... Yeah. Like the best it was going to do. I enjoyed but it. It had, was clever. It didn't quite... Yeah, that bloke from if... Game of Thrones in it. Yeah, the the hand or whatever. Little finger. Was. And then the guy from... um, What's his name? Dawn Ashmore. Yeah, the, yeah from like, X-Men. X-Men and other. Yeah. I thought the story didn't it also was really have, good. Um, oh, God, forgotten. One of the hobbits from Lord of the Rings in it as well. Uh, not Plan so sure about Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, is it? It's not Jimmy Simpson. It looks like Jimmy Simpson, but it's not Jimmy Simpson. Um, well, anyway, I don't know. I just, Come oh, on. yeah, yeah, sh- sure. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah, I'm a sucker <laughs> for good time. I'm a sucker for good like time travel stories. So, I really like Quantum, Quantum Break. Uh, I thought the gunplay's good. Final boss, I remember him being a bastard. Um, he is still a bastard. I fucking hate that final boss because it takes everything about the game that you have learned and throws it out the window. It's like... it. The game teaches you to be cautious, to use your cover, to use your powers like somewhat sparingly and... Uh, and be like kind of think about how you approach each combat scenario and the final boss is like i'm going to launch an aoe that's going to wipe 75 percent of the map and if you're not in this one corner you die yeah, and I it's like that, i think i remember, I remember peeves getting upset with that yeah, yeah. no i remember Thank peeves you. did yeah uh, so i yeah. got i got i got all the achievements on the xbox version i i thousand it and i had to do the game on hard and i didn't struggle with any part of the game except that boss and I was yeah, I like, think that this boss is, is hard, even on easy. Yeah, I played on normal on the deck, and I was like, this is fucked. 
I beat him, mm. but it took me about five tries. Um, you just have to like use your sprint ability the entire time. Uh, but I still enjoyed Quantum Break despite that. Um, and I, another game with Lance Reddick in it. He's everywhere. I miss he, him. Was he he's, in it as well? Yeah, he's uh, he's, he's I remember him the in the TV villains. Episode. Like he's mm. he's the villain's right hand man. He's uh, he's a baddie, but he's good. Um, so I'm playing at the moment, like, while we're sitting here, I'm playing Sleeping Dogs. Um, I've mentioned it before, but it's, yeah, yeah, so I never played Sleeping Dogs. This is my first time playing Sleeping Dogs. It's really good. Loving it. Yeah. (laughs) It's probably one of the best open world sandbox games I've played. Yeah. Yeah, it runs, uh... It runs perfectly. I mean, I'm playing it at locked 60 on high settings, and it's what it was, runs it, was it true it crime, great. but then they lost the license and developers and they changed it or something? Yeah, it was originally going to be a true crime game, and they were basically a piss poor man's GTA, weren't they? Yeah. But I thought but, uh, the story in Sleeping Dogs was really well done. It was, um, yeah. The the actual hand-to-hand combat's great. The vehicle-to-vehicle yeah. combat's great. Like... <laughs> I think it's really cool good. how you play as a cop and a thug, and you get to like do it from both sides. I think that's cool, and it also humanizes the like the the, the criminals in a way as well. Like you see yeah. things from their point of view. Yeah, um, and it feels really good as like a like a brawler, like. Just, just the combat and like doing countering, and then you know grabbing the weapons off the floor. I, don't know, I really like the combat. Yeah, it's, it uses uh, um, well. situational environmental attacks as well. Yeah, you can slam people into phone booths and shit. You can awesome. like hit people with giant fish. I think later on in the game as well. Oh, really? And, yeah. Nah. That's cool. There's some pretty cool bits, and there's there there is like fighting pits and stuff you can go to if you yeah. got to those yet as well. You can redo whenever you want, which is nice. Yeah, that's no, that's enjoyable. Uh, I'm I'm liking it. I don't know. I think it's. I don't think I'm going to sit here and like smash it. I think it's going to be one of those games I periodically pick up and put down. Um, but I I am enjoying what I've played. Uh, it's, it's, I will say it's it's in that camp of game where everyone who's played it liked it. Yeah, yeah. So I, if they did actually ever think about Greenlight in a sequel, I think it'd do pretty damn well. Yeah. Um, so I got the definitive edition. So I got a really good deal. I got the definitive edition with all the DLC and all the upreses or whatever for six dollars. And I got Jedi with all the DLC for five dollars. So oh, nice. they oh, were my, good. my yeah. first two games on the deck because they were bargains. Um, yeah. So I've definitely got my six dollars worth so far. <laughs> it's it's really good. Um, as well, it's one of the. So another thing is with the resolutions, right? So obviously it's eight hundred p on this screen because that's what the screen stops at. But if you connect it up to a say my ten eighty monitor over there. It, this is one of the few games I've found so far where it can actually maintain 1080, 60, and it's fine. Um, it actually, like, holds. I guess because it's older, and I guess yeah, the the art style, it means it's not as intensive. Yeah. But, it, yeah, it, it runs at 1080, 60 if I connect it to the screen, whereas I've found with some other games, I either have to run it at 720 to maintain the graphic settings I've had, or I have to drop... Um, the graphic settings down to get my FPS back. But mm. this game, it runs flawlessly. No matter if I dock it and it play it at 1080 or if I'm playing it on the screen just uh, as it is, uh, flawless. 60 FPS locked the whole time. Um, I'd say as far as games I've played on the deck goes, this game has probably worked the best of any game, which is nice. Nice. Uh, or at least most consistently, I'd say. Yeah. Um, you just need so I'm running survivors, and you're well away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sh- yeah. I've not played Vampire Survivors. I probably should. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna blow through all my games because at this point they're all on the deck. So I may as well, while we're in the deck section, yeah, I'll go just for talk it. I'm about pretty it. much yeah. up anyway before. Okay. Um, I played a bit of golf with your friends the other week. Um, 
on the deck and on my PC, so I could I kind of had a point of comparison. It's really well. Um, Webby, you've played golf with your friends. Haven't you? Oh, I'm playing it in ages. It's really good though. It is really yeah. Good so on game, Steam, yeah. it's got like the workshop, so people can make their own maps, mm. um, and you can download them. But it's people people are. People are weird and mean. They make really hard tracks, uh, courses. There's some, you know, they'll put like five windmills in a row, and if you get hit by one of the blades, you go flying into the water. Um, but I played that with some friends. It plays pretty well on the deck. Um, it doesn't quite have the precision of the mouse when you're aiming the ball uh, mm. using the right thumbstick. But, yeah, it plays fine. Um, so, yeah, I played a bit on the PC, a bit on the deck. But people, yeah, people, I think the get that game's longevity is going to come from that Steam Workshop and people making their own courses because the base game has like twelve courses or something. But yeah. with the Workshop, you got thousands to choose from, so it's never going to get all boring. Courses is a fucking lot. <laughs> like, yeah, if they're all eighteen holes. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember um, when you get you'd be lucky to get three or four in a like a PGA game or something. Yeah, well, so so it's like mini golf, right? It's like putt putt. It's not. Um, oh right. Proper, proper so you golf. mean like yeah, like uh, crazy golf? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's fun. Um, Just talk no, about Steam no, Workshop quite quickly, yeah. right? I oh, know. So when we yeah. were recording our Sega special the other day, I went on to my, I went on to Steam to check out my Mega Drive uh, collection that I've got on there, and I went into oh, the yeah. Steam Workshop and. People have added like ROMs to loads of other fucking games. You can just download and play in that fucking uh, in the Mega Drive collection. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, this is cool! Yeah, man, it's wicked. Yeah, the amount of stuff that oh. people put in there is mental." The, yeah, you know, you've mentioned it now. There was a game in my library that I saw that I didn't. So here's the problem, right? The re- half the reason I got the Steam Deck, I own like 600 Steam games. So I was like, you know what? For someone like me, it's probably worth having one, right? Because I've got all these games at my fingertips. I own a game called Sega Mega Drive Classics and Sega Genesis Classics. Yeah, that's um, it. yeah, yeah. But I only own two games. Like it's like uh, every game is DLC collection. underneath it. No, I, I guess I got it in a like a bundle or something. So I yeah. only have Streets of Rage 2 and Gunstar Heroes. Um, oh, two fucking great games, though. Like, so... Yeah. <laughs> you get, yeah, because but when I bought it, you bought the whole collection in one go. I can't remember how much it was. It must have been cheap, because I don't spend Yeah, I must have got it in a humble bundle or something, because I don't remember buying it. But Yeah. Yeah, I was playing a bit of Streets of Rage 2. Um, do you play the one, like, where... You... You're in. You're like in first person. You're in the bedroom and you pick the yeah. games off the shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was, it's really cool. good in VR as well. Um, when I had Is my it? Oculus, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That that was cool because you pick up the games and physic. You know, you put them in the top yeah. of the uh, Mega Drive and then you play. But yeah, it's you good. have to blow in the cartridge if it doesn't load first time. That's it, mate. Got to be done. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, this, I, yeah, yeah. It turns out I own that, and I thought that was kind of cool. Um, where else? What are my other games? Uh, I, you know, I haven't written it down, but I did try Resident Evil. Well, I tried Resident Evil Two Remake and Resident Evil Four. Um, Resident Evil Four, I played the Mercenaries mode for a bit, and it plays pretty well. I get like a locked forty-five yeah. on it, um, and it looks pretty good too. Uh, has anyone played Mercenaries mode? It's quite nah, fun. It's like nah. it's like Horde mode. Yeah. It's, it's like Horde I've mode, it but you have a timer. Day, yeah. yeah, I quite it's like It's very that. arcadey. You pick up things to extend your time or things yeah. that wipe all the enemies out before the next lot come in and score multipliers, all that kind of... It's just a high score. Yeah, kind of I, game mode. I could definitely see that as being like, if I want to pick up... If I want to play some Resident Evil, but I don't feel like sitting there and... Uh, you know, for an extended period of time, I could see myself just picking this up in like ten minute bursts. Mm. Um, I mean, the 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 one yeah. of the more interesting things about the these mercenaries modes and stuff when they added them is it actually allowed you to play as other characters you you never get to play as in the games. Oh, that's quite cool. Yeah, yeah. 
No, so I enjoyed that. Um, I did play a game. It got released for April Fool's Day, but it was a real game. Um, Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> um, it's yeah, so it's a real game. It's it's free this as well. Christian Chandler game. It, 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 it I don't know, maybe it's a <laughs> it's a murder mystery storybook game, like a point and click. Um. It's a very, very little fun little game. You just like, basically, it's Sonic's birthday, and they're having a murder mystery party, and Sonic is the victim um, because it's his birthday. So then you have to try and figure out, you know, which of the the cast of characters, and they got them all in there. You know, you got Amy, Knuckles, Shadow. You can try and figure out which one of them, you know, killed killed Sonic. You know, it's like it isn't mystery. official. Yeah, Sega. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Sega. Sega. Yeah, wow. yeah, it was an it was an April Fool's game. Yeah, it was like oh, a, they released it on April Fool's Day, though, but it's like it's not an April Fool. It really is a game. I thought it's it was out. like a, yeah, like a fan made or something. It no, was, Sega. I think they sort of allowed them to publish it or mm, let so, them yes, it says developed and published by Sega. Um, the reviews on Steam are overwhelmingly positive, with fourteen thousand reviews. So. It's pretty fun. I mean, it's just a point-and-click murder mystery, uh, Sonic-themed, all the Sonic characters. There are these little sections that are like... There are, like, mini-games where, like, you need to, like, deduct things. So when you're doing that, you, like, play a Sonic and you do a little stage and you, like, collect rings. and just, It's like a little Sonic game within the game. Um, and if you clear the stage, then your deduction is, like, concluded and then you can, you know, accuse characters and stuff. Um... So that that was fun. It only took me like an hour and a half, but it was a good little game. So I think I, I don't know. I think that's just on Steam, but it's free. So uh, I think it'd run on pretty much anything. It's it's. I mean, it's a storybook kind of mm. point and click. So it's yeah. But I really enjoyed browser that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, like a yeah browser point and click. But it's good. Um, there's no no voice acting, I suppose. That so that's where they kind of save on their production it's just all like text but the music's good i enjoyed that um i've talked for a while here but i've played a lot on the deck and i'll probably talked about the things i've played the most at this point um but i have they've picked up a few games just to sort of see how they run you know the old oh does it run yes good that'll be good for later mm-hmm. um uh i haven't played a lot of it really at all but probably the last one i'll talk about i did give uh that formula retro racing world tour a bash quickly um i know we both bought it but we haven't played it together oh, i yet, refunded it mate oh really yeah just because i know <laughs> I, I think it's fun really, um, yeah. i just no, i won't really play it so i was just like i'll fucking give my money back yeah i Maybe I feel the same way a little bit. I don't. I can't see myself sinking a lot of time into it, but I could see it being a fun little, uh, little game to just pick up on the go. Like it, it'd be good for the battery life on the Steam Deck. It'd probably yeah. be one of those games that gets five hours. Um, yeah, that's fun. You just it's just like it looks like those old retro racing games. And yeah, you just drive like around a Formula One track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a fun little game for for sure. But I just. I just thought to myself, yeah, it's fun, but I've got too too many games to play. I just, I just yeah. know, I know I won't really play it much. So, yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, I suppose very very last thing I'll mention is that Cyberpunk uh, recently had an update that made it deck verified. So I thought I'd give it a download and see how it is. And in a way, yes, it's playable. And in another way, God, I'll never play it on the deck <laughs> because. <laughs> Yes, it runs at a locked like forty FPS, but God, the graphic sacrifices you have to make to get it there, yeah. it looks fucking awful. So and I was like, "Playable was the Xbox One and PS4 base versions were playable." Mm. In probably way. more so, <laughs> probably in the sense that you can actually well, get stable yeah, frame rate on it. More, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um. Nah, uh, yeah. Look, so something for something to be considered verified, I think it has to run. You have you don't need to use any other inputs or anything for menus. That's kind of the definition of it. It's like runs well, doesn't have to have your mouse and keyboard to click through like launcher screens or whatever. Um, that's pretty much, and you know, 
ha- runs well enough. That's kind of the mm. definition of verified. So not everything that's verified sh- probably should be. Mm. And I think Cyberpunk, in one way, yes, it runs at a stable frame rate. It even has a Steam Deck preset. It like detects that you're on a Steam Deck and it puts it at the best settings to get you good FPS and good battery life. But fuck me, it does not look good. Contrary to contrary to something like Postal 2, which I played this week, which had a Steam Deck specific update, and it maps all the controls for you. It even detects you're on a Steam Deck, and on the loading screen it shows you the Steam Deck with like all the controls oh, as an outline. Yeah. yeah, and it runs perfectly, but also it's really old, <laughs> so oh, that's yeah, why. super old. <laughs> yeah, Postal 2 is fun, though, peeing on people and shooting them. Mm. Yeah. So with the Steam Deck, does it actually have like a touch screen or is there some sort of yeah. mousey pad thing on there? So it's got both. So it has a touch screen and it has two trap pads, trap balls uh, on the sides. So you can use it as a mouse cursor. Like I, I keep saying I'm good, done talking about games, but I did play a little bit of Civilization VI on it. I was um, going to say you yeah, some good uh, city builders and stuff with it. Yeah, yeah, so I was playing some Civilization VI with it, and I was using the thumb pad, the, the mouse pad as the, as the mouse, um, and you can use it to click as well. Um, yeah, I've talked a lot, but if anyone's got any questions specifically on the deck, happy to answer them. I think you've but, answered, answered oh, them all. Uh, yeah, but I think it's a very good bit of kit. Yeah. Um, there are bits I want to add to it that I don't have yet. Like, I want to get a skin for it, personalize it a bit. I've seen some cool ones. Um, I would like to get, I think it's called the Deck Mate. It's like an attachment you can put on the back, and then you can mount like a portable battery onto it or something. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind getting another SD card and putting Windows on it and seeing how Windows goes on it. Um, mm. But I don't want to install Windows over the top of SteamOS because I actually really like SteamOS and I think it's really well laid out and it works really well. And I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to put Windows over the top of it. Yeah, no, it makes have, sense. Yeah, like, there's risks involved. I mean, mm. you can always, like, re-image it or whatever, but... They're 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 coming out with it soon that you'll be able to dual boot natively on the de- on the deck, so you can just flip between them, kind of like um, oh, what's it called when you do it on Mac? You can do put Windows on it, whatever it's called. Oh, but, cool yeah, boot, they, yeah, 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 they're gonna make it so you can put um, uh, you can put Windows on it natively yeah. without yeah. having to like overwrite the mm. Steam OS yeah, or do it cool. on a card. Yeah. So yeah. I'll probably install Windows then and try to see how far I can push it, play something like COD or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Halo Master Chief Collection got verified this week and it runs like flawlessly on it. I haven't nice. played it myself. but See, the I've only problem with that is obviously I think the deck would be more of a purchase for me if you could natively download your Game Pass games onto it. Yeah, like, so, like so I've Xbox been using the like cloud Chief, stream. And, yeah, yeah you, you have to buy it on Steam. And, you know, and it's just like, well, I've already got it on yeah. Game Pass, you know what I mean? So Yeah, so, yeah, so I was, maybe the last thing I'll say. So I've done cloud streaming on it. Um, again, results may vary. Depends on your connection. Um, I have found that the battery life, regardless of what streamed game you play, will be pretty much as good as it can be. So I get about five hours out of any X cloud game. Um, try different things cause it to run at different kind of levels. Like Persona Four runs perfectly on it. Um, I tried. What else did I try? Oh, I tried Gears of War Two. That ran pretty well, but there was a bit of stutter. Um, so I was like, okay. So the more intensive the game is, the worse it runs. So that makes sense. But yeah, Persona runs great uh, on it. I played some MLB The Show Twenty Three on it. That runs pretty good as well. I played that for like two hours, actually. Didn't realize how long a round of MLB oh, is. It's fucking good, mate. It's great. Great game. Like 200G yeah. from my bed. It was great. Best game ever. I actually kind of enjoyed it. I wouldn't mind playing mm. more MLB. What? But the good thing is, of yeah. course, you don't have to download the games. So, yeah. And then I've done remote play with the Xbox and remote play on the PlayStation. Like I said before, I played a bit of God of War on it. That's remote cute. play just to test it out. So I've pretty much done everything with the deck that you can kind of do. I've done emulation, I've done remote play, I've done cloud gaming, I've 
I've, I've, I've tried everything for the listeners. I've gone, I've done everything. I've talked a lot. I've talked about all my games. And you'd recommend it? Oh, absolutely. Um, if, if you have a Steam library, absolutely yes. If you don't really have any PC games, I'd still say it's worth it. If you want to, like, load some emulators on it, or you want to slowly build a Steam collection with, like, humble bundles and Steam sales. But if yeah. you have a Steam library of any sort, I'd say absolutely, get one. Like, I've got 600 games, and, like, more than 500 of them play on the deck. So, nice. yeah. Cool. Thanks yeah. for that, Elliot. Um, yeah. Final, final thought. There's a website called ProtonDB. <laughs> it tells you how well games run on Linux. Use that website. It's how many helpful. final uh, thoughts has Sly had That's this uh, episode about? I'm 10? Done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to save the deck stuff for later, and you were like, let's do it now. Well, because you, you've already mentioned it. So I was like, well, we might as well fucking talk about it. Uh, well, I've talked about every game I've played then because I just lumped it into one big right, Steam Deck um, section. Uh, who was after Sly? I can't remember. Darren. It and, was me, but I've pretty much covered everything anyway. All right. Well, I've only played I've two played. other games, so. I'm going to do one of them. Um, Call of Duty. Um, had a really good session on it last night till like half past midnight. Um, with Laffa, Venom, Blakey. Hadn't seen Blakey in ages. Um, so some reminiscing going on. And Gavin, my next door neighbour, there's five of us. And it was absolutely hilarious. It was like... You know, it, it it brought us back to the old days on the 360 of just having a really good laugh on just a multiplayer game because cause we were not taking it ser- ser- seriously at all. We we were doing the normal multiplayer, uh, but we spent a lot of the time on the party game modes on COD as well, which we hadn't really done a lot of before, and fucking hell, it was hilarious because a lot of the par- party games are everyone versus, versus everyone, so... You know, we were ripping the piss out of each other when we were killing each other and teabagging each other. And, oh, it was just such a good laugh, man. And, yeah, the cool Call of Duty is one of those games, man. Like, this Call of Duty is the best COD that I think I've played. I mean, I've played it now for way over 200 hours. Um, And I just love every single mode, mainly the DMZ mode. I think that's the best. And... Peeps has been getting into that a bit more as well this week. But when you get a group of you on just having a laugh, just shooting the fuck out of everyone and all that, it's just a good time. You know what I mean? And yeah, I think like COD is definitely the best multiplayer game to play at the minute, I think. You know, if you get a group of mates together, because it's just fun times just shooting the shit out of everything. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to give a shout out to all the guys and. I'd have just had a really good time. So if anyone's up for a session on COD, just hit me up. And, I, um, yeah. I, I enjoyed what I've played of COD. My problem is none of my friends really have it. I've got one friend who has the main game. I've got another right. friend who made the effort to download Warzone. Um, I'm talking people in my own sort of time. Yeah, zone. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So for, so for me... And it's just kind of the Dead Island problem again for me. It's like mm-hmm. I buying games on Xbox or PC anymore. They f- it feels almost redundant if it's multiplayer or co-op because the only game my friends play is Siege on PlayStation. So yeah. I kind of that is my multiplayer game. Is yeah. it, uh, that and Rocket League? They're my two yeah. games. Yeah. Um, and Siege now has crossplay with Xbox, but. Yeah, so COD, COD, of course, is cross-play on everything, but I just don't know anyone that actually owns it that lives near mm, me. Yeah. So playing with people is quite hard. No, I understand that. You, you know, I completely understand that. I think for, for me, it's just because I there's always regular people online I play COD yeah. with most evenings, makes it perfect. Yeah. Um, but I always, you know, but I have that problem with a lot of PC games. You know, I have all these multiplayer games on PC, like yeah. Ready or Not, and I've got a whole fucking list, um, yeah. and just no one to play them with, which is really annoying. And Call of Duty just seems to be that game that people that I know in it, in the community just seem to gravitate toward, and it's just a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like a niche game. COD Call of Duty is that game that most people own, which is handy. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, the war zone's yeah. free as well, DMZ. Yeah. So yeah, sweet. Um, Nick, 
Yeah, well, the last one I really played is um, still Resi 4 Remake. I played through that again on New Game Plus. Oh, wow. Nice oh, I'd really the... be loving it. Yeah, which, like I said, I haven't really done that for the last few Resi games, like 7 and 8. Mm. I was like, I finished it, and I'm like, done, finished, you know, uninstall. Yep. Whereas this one, I just... Because you can actually do New Game Plus... Yeah, you know, keep all your weapons and stuff uh-huh. upgrades and just carry yeah. on. Yeah, which is nice. So made it a little bit, and then I played it on a harder difficulty as well. Yeah, and collected all the little, um, the little collectible men. There's one e- in each oh, well mission. Done. I forgot what it is, but yeah, I found him. And because I got like quite bad hearing as well, you could put a little thing on where it tells you in the game, like. Oh, there's a you can hear a mechanical noise. Oh, yeah, that's good. Like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was nice. So, I, I mean, I used a YouTube guide anyway, so whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, I played through that. And then, like Alex said, I played a bit of um, the Mercenaries mode, which upset a few people when they updated that, brought that in, because people were playing through, trying to play through the game on professional difficulty mode, which is pretty hard. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to play through that to unlock, like, an unlimited gun. Right. At the hand cannon. The hand cannon, yeah. Yeah, which is rock hard to get through. And, um, I mean, I haven't done I won't even bother attempting it. And then, apparently, you could just get it in mercenaries mode really easily. In, like, yeah, you, yeah, well, you have to get... You have to get S-class on all three maps with one character. Um, yeah. I think... I I actually think the deck might have been holding me back a bit, to be honest. I think I might need to try this one on my PC because yeah. I got A, A, and B with Leon on my first try. So I don't know how much of a gap there is between A and S, but uh, I'm going to go well, look that no, That's the next one up. I mean, I got, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I got three S ranks, one after the other first time. Ooh, so it's pretty well done. easy. It's pretty yeah. easy. And, I mean, a lot of people are a bit upset because... With mercenaries mode, they like stealth added a load of microtransactions to the game. Oh yeah, because uh, you know, I mean, yeah. obviously that's what games do now, but it's just a bit cheeky that they waited until two weeks after the after game the came reviews, out. Yeah, and a lot of people get upset if there's microtransactions in games, especially games you know that are sixty, seventy pounds new, and you know they got praised for not having them in. And like I said, Resi 4, it's like one of, there's not many games that they actually, you know, had the review embargo almost a whole week before it came out. Wow. Which is, you know, it's quite unheard of. Normally Mm. they release it four or five o'clock the day before it comes out. So all people's pre-orders have already been shipped and posted. So that's when they normally do it. So this is... I mean, that doesn't bother me, microtransactions. It's kind of shitty that they put them in games, but as long as they, depending on the game, as long as I don't throw them down my throat to a certain point where I may accidentally get to a purchase screen, like I did a few weeks ago, I said, with Mortal Kombat 11, where I think twice you load that game up and it's like, Press A to accept these terms and conditions. Press A for this. Press A for this. Press A for this. Oh, press B to go to the game, or press A to buy the season pass for 16 quid. And I'm like, whoa, careful, because if I'd have pressed A one more time, I'd have bought a season pass for a game I didn't even wow. I didn't even want. So it's just, you know, some of them are cheeky, but, I mean, it's still a good game, and, you know, it just is what it is. That's what they're I was going to ask, have you done a playthrough where you do, like, uh, don't talk to the merchant or uh, don't use a healing item or did you just play through it again? I would just play through it. I mean, yeah. I said, I mean, I'm not that fussed with achievements yeah. and trophies anymore. I was a bit of a stage where I was like with my mates trying sort of like, you know, beat each other every month. And a few years ago, I think I hit 100,000 achievements on Xbox and I was just like, nah. I mean, I'll have a look when the game is finished, and if it's doable and I'm enjoying it, then you know I might I might try and get yeah. all the achievements. If you know if it requires 
you know maybe another quick play through or a few bits that's fair but not some of those things you know like play it through no phone the ultra hard difficulty not talking to him not using that's like nah that's that's too so much you know, i you know. i started a new game plus um i've only done chapter one but i am trying to do a few of them at once. I'm trying to do don't use a healing item, don't talk to the merchant, and do the game in under five hours. So I am doing it on easy, because I'm not stupid. Um, but yeah, don't use a healing item, that's going to be a tough one. Don't talk to the merchant, I could probably get away with it. But uh, yeah, and the under five hours thing, I'm cool. halfway. You might just forget and just oh. talk to him. Like, right near the yeah. end. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. Now that yeah, oh, wouldn't surprise me. It's just... I bought... Yeah. I bought a rocket launcher on the second last chapter and I saved it for the final boss. It was so satisfying. Because <laughs> the, the rocket launcher, for the most part, for most bosses, it can, like, it send them to their second phase or if they're on the second phase, it'll kill them straight up. Mm. Um, or if it's a one-phase boss, it will kill them straight away. Um, yeah. I'm just RPG, one of these old-school resis, so I just, <laughs> I just save all my good guns and ammo until final boss and i get to the oh, final yeah. boss and i use like four magnum ammo and it's over and i'm like great i had all these guns all these bullets that i saved and i just oh. and saved and dodged and everything and then i get to use like four bullets yeah well i blasted the final boss with a rocket on his first phase mm not thinking that he would have a set, and then he had a second, and I was like, ah, shit. So I loaded back and fought the first phase properly, and then on the second phase, I just blasted him with the RPG, and it was done. <laughs> I was like, sweet. Mm. Easy. <laughs> Loved it. But yeah, it's a good... I like it. It's a good game. I still think yeah. it's, it's better than Resi 3 Remake. Oh, yeah. But Resi I still 3 think... Remake, I felt ripped yeah. off a bit. Yeah, it's that's... too short. Well, they cut so much. I don't... They cut a couple of bits and added a couple of bits, so it doesn't seem like they shortchanged you. Two remake was good. I think it's on par with two remake, but still, one remake is still the best. Like, obviously, obviously, it's older now with the tank controls. If people don't like those, and it's you know it's the fixed camera angles and stuff, which some people like, some people hate. But it's just like the you know to do a remake properly, it had everything in the original added so much more to it, made the graphics look great, you know, expanded on the story. And that's what I'm saying, that, that's what it should do. Whereas, you know, we're praising Resi 4 for not cutting loads of content, what Resi 3 did. And I was expecting there to, you know, I was hoping there was going to be more content. I mean, I still haven't, you know, because they took the um, Ada DLC away, but then it was, was DLC, so it's kind of... Yeah. Know, it's, it's the yeah so but I, i'm not sure because capcom sometimes people have said yeah we're gonna add it and it's gonna be free dlc later in the year and some people have said no it's not coming at all so it's hard to know exactly but you know i, know I, tried, uh, I, know I tried playing out. i tried playing code veronica last week um i can't yeah. get over the fix i can't get over the fixed camera angles i can't do it <laughs> why i can't do it i don't know i just I felt too sluggish, and then with the gun, like, the holding the button to aim it up and then to shoot it, it just felt off. Yes. Um, and then I got cornered in the graveyard, yeah. and then I got eaten by a bunch of zombies. So Yeah, and that Code Veronica is probably the hardest Resident Evil out of all of them. Yeah. But that, that, that is a good game. A remake. That is one, like I said, it started messing with Resi fans as well, just like the order it did stuff in, and the knife is really overpowered in that game as well. Is whereas it? most oh, of the other games, you just throw the knife away and just ignore it, whereas this one it is worth using if you're like running low on ammo. But yeah, but like I said, it's still an old Resi game where you're supposed to dodge and not kill everything. Okay. But yeah, that is probably the hardest game and one of the longest speed runs as well. Like a lot of the older Resi games, like on the PS1, you can go through all of them well under an hour. Like yeah, a lot okay. of them, like, you know, like 40 minutes. I think the first Resi one's like 38 minutes, things like that. Whereas this one, I think the world record's like one hour, 40 minutes. Oh. You know, and that's going through it like mad. You know, like someone who, who really who's really good at the game, but yeah, that one probably I... 
for the story, that one is what people wanted to have a remake. Yeah. And like I said, pe- some people on online are like, yep, they're going to remake Code Veronica next, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do nine and then um, remake uh, the first Resident Evil. Oh, again, yeah, again. they alternate them, don't they? They do a new title and then they do a remake. So that means yeah. next year we'll get nine. Oh. Yeah, nine, the end of whatever that was. Well, but then after that, I, uh, yeah. 2026 will be 30 year anniversary of the first Resident Evil game, and that makes you feel old. Oh, yeah. I I wonder for nine if they're gonna follow um, oh, what's her name? The girl. Yeah, yeah. The daughter Rose is it? I think I, so. Considering I haven't played the DLC. I I need to play no, the I DLC. Didn't. I village. haven't yet. I just don't. I need, I need don't really want to, but. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me considering they supp- they apparently killed off the main like Ethan in the last game, so that's you know maybe they will. I don't know, but I'll just moan and say it's not not a Resident Evil game, and then still buy it because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Very late. Like Have you not played eight? Yeah, I bought it. I didn't like. I, mean, oh, I didn't yeah. hate it. It was oh, good. like a lot of them. It's a good actiony type game, but they, they just don't feel very Resident Evil-y. No, no, what I you think... mean? It seems more like a Outlast first person jump scare simulator. I mean, it was nice because I had the the big lady with the huge tits. You know, that was cool. Yeah, and then well, she I like the... away very quickly, and I was like, oh. I like. I quite like the setting of seven in the in the bayou in the in Louisiana, and then I quite like oh, in eight. The they went back to one of those like... East European villages. Yeah, again. it's the the locations <laughs> are part of the character of those games. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Seven was good as it had underpinnings of a Resi game, and it had jump scares. I thought Seven yeah. was better than Eight as a Resi yeah, game. Yeah, I think so. It had more puzzles. There wasn't a lot of puzzles in Eight, and I'll tell you now, in yeah. Four, there's not many puzzles at all. There's like there three puzzles. Yeah, they added a few and took a few away, and nothing really. It was like look at some paint on the wall and press. Oh, it the, I'll tell you the one where you have to align the stained glass mural that pissed me off. That puzzle it was really easy. Was it? No, it I took me really. ages. It took you me just, ages too. You just align oh, one, one of the in, colors yeah. and then flick and flick the rest. It's easy. Oh, the only one I thought was that was perfect. you know where you, right at the start where you put the um. Glass ball in the door, and you have to keep spinning it round to make it look. That like one it. took me no time at all. Yeah, that, that took a while for me. For oh, that reason. one was fine for me. It was the one with the stained glass mural that pissed me mm. off. Yeah, if you don't know how it aligns, are you colour blind? It's a bit of a what? No, help? it's got nothing to do with the colours. It's trying to get it so you know where that. Oh, that's where that bit goes, and then that bit. I get it yeah. from Elliot. Yeah, no, I think yeah. you just have to. I think you use the green one first is the best, and then you see where it fits oh. around the bit in the middle, and then the other two are quite easy. Anyway, well, Resident they, Evil. I like. Awesome. I liked it. Good. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so it's me done. All right. Uh, I think everyone's done. I've got one more game. I'm going to mention it very briefly. Uh, I played it today with my boy. A uh, new game just come out, Minecraft Legends. Oh, downloaded this. I haven't played it yet, though. It's okay. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, it, it's weird because you're basically you're on a horse the whole time, or you can... Uh, well, I did actually find t- um, a tiger I could ride around on. But it's weird because it's basically uh, me and my boy were playing co-op on the story mode, and... There's a lot of buttons, mate, to be honest. So I had to take him through the tutorial and he still was a little bit like, oh, I don't know what to do with these buttons. Because basically, like, to gain your resources, you've got to, like, hold down the left trigger and then otherwise you've got to choose with the right bump, right or left bumpers what resources you want, like wood or iron or whatever the fuck. And then you hold down left trigger and then you and that, to, to bring up a, like a little icon and then you, you want them to gather the resources from and then they gather them when you press the right trigger. And then it's kind of like a little bit like a tower defense game. So like so you, you get to points in this in, on the map where you need to like defeat these enemies or defend a town or whatever. And you can basically build fortifications like 
arrow towers and walls and gates and shit. Uh, and then you basically like to 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 fight. What was that? Oh, there was a game on the 360 where these little dudes following you around. I forget the name of it now, and I had it in my mind. Overlord. Overlord. Yes, it's like Overlord. Um, so so basically, there's these little things you can put down, uh, uh, which spawn your comrades. So and and they all do different things. So like you got dudes that are better against enemies, dudes that are better at d destroying buildings, etc., etc. And basically, you hold down the X button on top of the spawn point to spawn them in, and then you can direct them so you can get them to follow you, or you can tell them where to go to basically attack. So that's basically how the game works. But it's just I, I find it very fiddly you know so obviously i was playing it on using my xbox controller and so is my boy but you know to play it co-op you've got to use a system each so i was playing it on my pc and he was on the xbox both using controllers but you know for a game that's aimed at kids it's real I, I think it's too i think it's too much is going on on the controller because he was really struggling with what to press to do, like to, to bring the um, little minions out and what, you know, and how to send them out and how to collect stuff, uh, which, which was a little bit annoying. So I was having to do it all myself pre pretty much. Um, but graphically, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's Minecraft, but it looks nice. You know, they've done a good job of that with that. Um, but I just don't know how much longevity it's going to have because the map's quite big and I can see where they're kind of going um because like the other minecraft game that they brought out minecraft dungeons it was full of dlc like microtransaction bollocks and i can and i reckon minecraft legends is gonna go the same way to be honest um but the overworld's you know it's big there's there, there seems i mean we only scratch the surface with it but initial impressions yeah it's it, it's all right but yeah i don't you know i really it's for kind of 10 year olds or whatever i think i mean my boy's only five which was struggling so yeah it's all right but not super duper amazing or anything so that's what i wanted to say on it could uh, be could be fun if you got a group of people on it maybe it's like a tower defense right yeah 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 yeah. whereas in the like well we played the story and there's like places to go and there's like enemy encampments you need to fucking go and destroy and shit yeah um, yeah, and then and is then there there's a, something gone. Sorry, is there like single player or is it just multiplayer? Um, no, it's single player. So I was, I was playing the campaign, oh. so you can do the campaign okay. story single player or co op. Oh, okay. uh, For some like, reason, I thought of it as just a multiplayer. I don't know. Why. No, and but there is a multiplayer mode on there. When I watched the video when they advertised it, you know, in that um, yeah, well, Xbox I remember event. we watched that. Yeah. Yeah, you can play against people, and it's a bit, you know, it's more, you know, you, each of you builds a base, and, and, and you've got to defend it or attack your opponents or whatever. But, yeah, it seems okay, but not really my thing. I just thought it'd be good for me and him to play together because he loves Minecraft, so, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah, that's all Red, the games Red played, Red out next week. Another, another Game Pass game. Red yeah. Bull's actually out next week. Yeah, yeah. So Redfall's out next week. Um, yeah, interestingly to see. So there's been I've I've noticed on the social media there's been a lot of hate towards Xbox the last couple of weeks. Oh I yeah, think a lot of it stemmed from this Redfall thirty FPS gate. FPS we'll gate. It. Yeah, <laughs> FPS gate. And um, yeah, there was also another story flying around online about how. Um, Microsoft weren't happy with how Hi-Fi Rush sold, which was apt, which was actually uh, poo-pooed by um, Xbox themselves. They came out and yeah. said, no, uh, Phil, Phil Spencer it was, wasn't it? Come out and said, no, we're really happy with it. You know, it did, like, it had a lot of players on Game Pass, blah, 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 blah. But it just feels like there is a lot of, lot of ne negative press surrounding Xbox at the moment, which I've seen a lot of stories because obviously they bought up all these studios. Uh, there's not a lot of good exclusives out for the system. You know, two, three years into the life cycle, 
you know, where are the games? You know, whereas PlayStation's kind of been knocking it out of the park with the exclusives. And it just feels like all the Game Pass or slash Xbox exclusive games coming out have been marred by some tech technical issues, be it FPS, graphics, or whatever. Most notably recently with Ghostwire Tokyo come out on Game Pass and the PlayStation 5 be- uh, version is apparently a lot better than the Series X version and when it comes to graphics and ray tracing and frame rate. So, so yeah, there's quite a bit of negativity surrounding Xbox at the moment. It is a bit sad to see, um, to be honest, and I don't think it's un- unwarranted, to be honest, because as someone who is a big Xbox gamer slash PC, I mean, it's all the same kind of un- universe, really, I I think that Xbox need need they do need to sort it out. I mean, another example I have personally is Forza Horizon Five will not launch on my PC. It will not launch. Yeah, and I'm not the only person who has this issue, so I have to play it on my Xbox. So if you're purely a PC gamer and you have this issue, you're fucked. You can't fucking play it. Um, I uh, I just want to chime in. Uh, I did play it on the cloud horizon five and it ran perfectly yeah i, I was saying yeah, yeah. lock 60 so cloud yeah. is an option yeah so, so i mean it's, it's just um it's interesting just seeing all that ne- that negative press around an xbox at the moment because it is you know the xbox i do feel they they need to sort it out you know where are the games and i i you know starfield i'm 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 kind of worried to be honest as well which is really sad for me to say um, it just feels like PlayStation are really knocking it out of the park this gen. I mean, you look at console sales, they're just slamming Xbox massively. Game sales are just massively more on the PlayStation. I, I want to slightly play devil's advocate here. As far as this year goes, what have PlayStation released so far? Nothing. They haven't released anything this year. Right. Yeah. Whereas Xbox, I mean... Depending on what you think of the games, sure, but they have really, you know, they've released Minecraft Legends, Red Falls next week. Um, they fucking had Wo Long. I know you don't care for them, but they are games that Xbox has mm. published or pushed out with mm. the Game Pass. Whereas yeah. PlayStation, their first, their first game this year is Final Fantasy, and their other game is Spider Man. I don't think they have anything else. They've yeah, got but nothing. Then, but then, like Final Fantasy is is a system seller. Other. Yeah, there will, is also other games like you mentioned early on that just are still releasing on that pla- that platform. Yeah, but not I don't the know. other. I I just feel like so far this year Xbox has put out more. So saying where are the games? Yeah, fair. Historically, Xbox hasn't had many games, but this year they do seem to have a good few games lined up. Yeah, I mean, but it's not the quantity. This year. It's not the quantity, it's the quality, mate. And that quality has been lacking, in my opinion. Yeah, sure. And in a lot of other know. people's opinion, looking at the articles that have been pushed out, especially in the yeah, last yeah. few weeks. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just been interesting uh, for me seeing the, the media actually fucking saying this shit as well is just me i feel like i'm a bit of an echo yeah, you know, no, i'm not, talking to a brick wall sometimes i'm not an xbox apologist like i am going to say fps gate perfectly valid argument like it should not be 30 on consoles fucking delay it fix it make it better um because treating your console players like second class citizens where the pc players get you know whatever they want high frame rate and making you <laughs> people on xbox play it at 30 it's yeah. shitty fix it do better um, and I hope that the Starfield team has looked at this and the backlash and they've gone, okay, can we definitely make sure it runs at 60 on console, even if it's at 1080 or 1440? Can, we, can we do it? Pretty much, I think everyone's pretty <laughs> much accepted that game will be a 30 FPS game. Have, have they? Because I expect more, but that's... I'd be surprised if Starfield even launches from the Xbox app. <laughs> mate. It's not going to work. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm... <laughs> I'm not going to be near my Xbox for three months. I'm not going to have an Xbox. My only gaming device is going to be the fucking Steam Deck. So as long as it runs at 800p at 60 FPS, I'm fine. It's not (laughs) an Xbox thing. It's a a games (laughs) thing in general. Yeah. Why bother 
that they're giving you no reason to want a game on launch day unless you've got fear of missing out. It's just. I mean, I mean, I mean, the, the only saving grace for us is yes, we have Game Pass, so yeah, you yeah. know, I'm not we're not spending. Well, we yeah. are with the subscription, but we're not paying sure. 60, 70 quid for the game, you know, yeah. at that day and date, if that makes sense. So, you know, and, you know, me and Sly are a little bit elitist. We've got our PCs as well, so yeah. we do have more options. But, uh, you know, it's, that that's a very small sub subset of gamers because most gamers don't want to spend stupid money on a PC. They want to just sit on their ass on the sofa on the console. So... I do sympathise as a console gamer as well. So, yeah, but the thing yeah. is, whether you talk about the Game Pass games, I think Switch said something similar before. It's like because it's on Game Pass, you don't give it as much attention as you would as if it was, you know, if you spent fifty quid on the game. It's kind of like you know, if you yeah. spent a tenner to go to the cinema, yeah, and you got twenty minutes into the movie and thought this is shit, I'm going to walk out of the cinema. No, you wouldn't. But whereas if you were watching something on Netflix for 20 minutes, Better half an hour, off, it was yeah. shit, yeah. you yeah. wouldn't care I, about turning it off I, because yeah. it doesn't really bother you. It's, it's a very similar, not exactly the same, but a very similar type of mentality. Well, it bothers me because I still I bitch actually, about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I know a bloke who actually has one of those like monthly cinema or yearly cinema passes. Yeah. He walks out of films all the time. He'll, yeah, go, he'll, I know just, he'll just drive do down there, check out a film, and be like, "No shit," walked out after twenty minutes. Yeah, because he's already paid, so it doesn't. He's not losing money. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's just, I don't know. And plus, there's also a lot of people online saying, "Oh, all these publishers that have re- released the games on Xbox, they're not happy because they're not making as much money as they possibly could have done if they'd have released it." not on Game Pass. Well, you don't know that, and it's up to mm. the publishers and developers to decide that before. They don't have like to put their games on Game Pass, do they? It's up to them. Yeah, yeah they don't have to do it. They don't force... Xbox haven't forced anyone to take guaranteed money. I mean, some games could come out and, for whatever reason, just absolutely flop and mm. die a death... Or they could come out on Game Pass and do really well, and they've actually got, you know, they've got decent money. It's just yeah. it's the risk you take. Do you, you take guaranteed money from Xbox, or do huh. you risk yeah. not releasing it and releasing it, it around something else? A lot else, of the reasons know? for the sort of like we'll say lack of support from more Japanese companies for Xbox is the fact that Xbox over there isn't really a fantastic brand. It doesn't do particularly well. It peaked Apparently during the 360 the S is era. The, biggest, the, the, the <laughs> Series S is the biggest selling Xbox of all time over there, which is not well, exactly the best thing. It's because nah. it's small and it's digital. But apparently it's, it's doing okay, you know, because I think because it's a cheaper console and they don't really care too much about 4K and mm. it's small and you don't have to put discs on. People are just using it as a Game Pass machine. Like I said, they're going back and playing all the old games they never played on Xbox One and 360 because it sold so bad. So maybe that's why it's doing okay. Yeah. have have been contemplating getting an S, but for only for a very specific mm. purpose, and it would be to put at my parents' house uh, so when I come visit. I wouldn't recommend I mean, I mean, I've got one, and it's a great little machine. Um, don't, yeah, yeah. don't don't get me wrong. It's great because I've got a 1080p screen for it. Um, yeah. But it's just the storage is so tiny. You only get like 360 gig of usable fucking yeah. storage. You can only really have a couple of games on there. Well, I I have an expansion card, so that kind oh, of nice. problem oh, yeah. isn't really a factor for me. I've got because I got it in the back of my X, which means if I yeah. want to. Yeah. get an S and take it with me on my travels. I've got my little card. I can plug buy one of those in. if you could buy a two terabyte one for 50 quid. I mean, yeah, they're, they're I've so got, expensive. I've got the one terabyte. This was at 400 quid for a two terabyte. I was like, you're joking me. Yeah, so I was looking at them the other day because my Series X, I've, I'm out at stage, and bearing in mind it's not my main fucking system, I have to delete games now to fucking install other ones to play. Yeah. I had uh, to do that this uh, week for fucking sorry. Jedi Survivor for the uh, preload because it's 155 gigabytes. Oh, so that's I had to crazy. 
So I was looking online at these expansion cards, and the one terabyte one is like 200 quid. And I'm like, Jesus. I'm not paying. I thought I paid that. I paid less less than that for my Series S console. Yeah, the fucking yeah. storage card's more than the fucking console. I guess the uh, Amazon wish list it and wait for a sale on Black oh, Friday or something. That's crazy. That's how I got mine. I got mine. Well, I got mine really two cheap. terabyte for just over 300 Oof. during an Amazon sale. <laughs> That's a lot. a lot of money, though, mate. That's, that's a ridiculous well, amount of money. Constantly keep deleting games all the time every five minutes. Updates. Well, I'm not too bad because I'll play a game through completion, and when I'm done with it, I'll delete it and move on to another one. You know, I'm, I, I very rarely have more than one or two games on the go at once. Yeah, but because my little boy plays on it as well, I've got some of his little games on there as well, so. Yeah, it's not like I can just fucking delete. Well, the it's thing not... is, as well, is I look at a lot of things of like when I go to delete a game. When you delete a game, there's a big chance that you'll never play that game again. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you go to think of playing it, you're like, oh, fuck, I've got to install it again. Haven't yeah. Played. I mean, people have said to me because I've. Find out yeah. The DLC needs to be re downloaded and then the updates. It's, I can't be fucking. Yeah. Playing, so I'll play something else. Definitely. I mean, people have said to me, um, yeah, I've said, because like, I've got an external drive plugged into my Series X for a while, like my old Xbox One games and that, like, oh, just move, yeah, move them onto the external, move them back. But still, that takes fucking ages. Like, I don't yeah. know if you're doing that. If I just want to play a game, I've got to wait fucking half an hour to, yeah. to move across. Transfers between the internal and between the expansion card i have found are really fast though i guess because they both use the same type of memory yeah same with um, uh, playstation there yeah yeah i've got an m2 drive on my ps5 yeah but yeah. i've got like an external spinny drive you know what i mean yeah yeah that on like 7200 rpm you know yeah. which i had in my xbox one so that's how old it is yeah um, i've got an m2 in my ps5 that's pretty quick too yeah yeah, but they're a decent price. I mean, if you if you could yeah. get an M.2 for the Series X, I would have fucking bought one already. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I know, think I someone know. posted in our chat a while back, Amazon did a sale on the very same hard drive I've got in my PS5, the um, Western Digital Black. Yeah, I've got that in my PC. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was on sale for about 200 quid. I paid less than that for mine. Much less. Is it yeah. the yeah, but is it the one with the heat sink and everything yeah. attached? Yeah. Yeah. I paid like one twenty for it. Mad. Yeah. Uh, but I put it in my PC instead because it was like oh, PC storage bad. Blah, yeah. <laughs> no. Um my 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 only other piece of news quite interesting. So there was a hacker uh who well a po- a guy who sorted who used to who hacked the Switch and some other Nintendo systems back in the day called Gary Bowser. Oh yeah. Yeah? Oh uh, no, this this is awful. That is real yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is real name. Wow. So and there's Gary Bowser and there's Doug Bowser, but no yeah. relation. So he spread mods and hacks for the Switch, and I think he also did for um the DS back in the day as well. Um like they sold those little card things you could put an SD card in. Um. Anyway, so he got put put in prison for three years. He's just come yeah. out of prison. Uh, the, the, this is all for just the piracy stuff for Nintendo. Yeah. Um. But for the rest of his life, Nintendo take thirty percent of his income. Yeah. And the rest his, of his fi- life, his fine is like a hundred. Oh no! It's so it's some it's in the millions. Whatever they find, hey, ten like, million. He'll never pay it off. He'll never ten pay million, it off. Yeah. So yeah. they're just going to take 30% got hit with of his the income. ultimate hex card. Yeah. Yeah. Fucked up, isn't it? Crazy, Basically yeah. got an yeah. ex-wife and Nintendo. Uh, it's crazy yeah. because like my like I was like because I've got two Nintendo Switches and one of them's cracked, so I can just download the game. Maybe so, be careful; they could be listening. So they're fucking <laughs> they're bang at it, but there's loads of these stores. You just fucking. You know, so it's not they haven't put Nintendo haven't put anyone off. It's still fucking going on. The um the worst bit is they were taking his prison money as well. 
Oh, like while he was in God. prison, he got yeah, got like. Yeah, no, no, it was like it was like I think it, I think it was like I think it was like ten percent of his prison money. I think it scaled, but they, his whole time in prison, he was able to pay back a hundred and seventy-five dollars. Well, yeah, he spent the rest of it using cigarettes for protection. <laughs> yeah, because Doug Bowser's going to come beat him up. Don't but Nintendo have always been hot on the piracy, but you know you can still fucking download their games off the internet. But then you the can see other game. people's points where they're like, yeah. "Oh, you're stealing money," and it's like, "But you're not even fucking selling it." Yeah. Yeah. How can I be stealing something you're not selling? Yeah. I'm not people gonna lie, I am currently this. browsing people how to download it. Switch ROMs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I am browsing how to download Switch ROMs right now. I want to get Breath of the Wild at 60 FPS on my deck. Uh, the new ones out there as well. Yeah. The, the classic, someone is always made an example of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, mate, yeah, well, I've got another little people. news for that. Web- and for the Nintendo end of the day, do we mm-hmm. know if this is actually fully true or it could just be a story yeah, floating out there to put people true. off? All right, fair enough. If I've seen, yeah. And um, yeah, another one, I think this is a couple of weeks ago. You know, when they announced they did the. The new Zelda showcase thingy, and then they announced the new. There was a new like limited edition Switch and limited edition yep. of the game. Yeah, yeah. And a bloke in America in Gamespot like posted, "Oh, there's this is coming out like about two or three hours before the event." Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. They had like pre-orders for it. Yeah, because he put a picture of the map or something, did didn't he? Yeah, he put yeah, something, yeah. and um, yeah, the the poster that they're giving away or something. But anyway. Yeah. So they were like, oh, that was naughty. Yeah, Nintendo got him fired. They went Whoa. through and that's official. They, they, and GameSpot of it, or GameStop have even admitted that Nintendo contacted him and said they want his job. So I was like, that's nice. But how did they know it was that guy? Like, did they know they from his know handle, who, his social media well, handles? Yeah, you know, knew who he was. He didn't Ugh, like fucking use idiot. an alias or nothing. I know it's an idiot, but it's like... We all knew that it was there. They were even in the wild, you know. They'd give them out to people, and they'd even had like YouTube videos come out showing the console. So it's yeah. weird that it was after the embargo that they could show, but but he wasn't an embargo. But they got him sacked. It's just I don't know. yeah, they are Nintendo are assholes, mate. Oh yeah, and they're going after the YouTubers again, like showing the clips and stuff. Like, co- like, but they're manually copywriting videos. Yeah, they're going after certain YouTubers and man because um, there's a Nintendo ambassador program which they want all these YouTubers and Twitch streamers and things to. But you're basically join. locked into them, aren't you? Once you yeah, do well, that, yeah. Basically, the ambassador program is they will not come after you, but you give them a percentage of your earnings. Fucking hell! So. There's a few people who are like, no. So if they don't, then they deliberately go to their channel and manually copyright them. But even yeah. if they don't, um, you know, even if they fight it and say, no, I have, this is fair use, mm. by the time they've fought it and, you know, the YouTube have gone through and checked and went, yeah, actually, this is fair use. You've used, like, two screenshots for... 10 seconds of a 15 minute video where you're talking about it you know that's old news you know that could be five six days after the news yeah, so no mean, one would yeah. then go back to see the video mm-hmm. you know that's just i don't know that's just what they're like aren't they they that's they're gonna that's just gonna get worse and worse isn't it? yeah right. yeah yeah that's all my news anyway guys so any other news? Are we all good? Oh, I saw an article just now. Uh, Division 2's getting a new roguelite mode, which seems kind of cool. What? Fucking games? What? I'm surprised the game is still alive, to be honest. Road, roadmap Year 5. Oh. I haven't played it since uh, Year 1. Years, but, uh, Division 2? Are you serious? Yeah, mm. pandemic time will do that to you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You know, I bought Division 1, brand new in the plastic, never played it. So I bought Division 2, brand new, and never played that as well. No, you don't say that. It's just, oh. Oh, I love, I love, 
I think I liked the first one more than the second one. I feel I certainly played the first one a lot more than the second one. Oh, I, I really like the second one. Second one, I, finished... one. Second one, I feel like I finished it and I dropped off. First one, I I kind of stuck with it like into the I end game. I think the first one had a better setting. It was that kind of weird the New York in the snow, New York yeah. in the snow Christmas, but everything was like fucked up. Yeah, I like that. The second one's DC, isn't it? I like yeah, that. I mean, well, yeah, and you had the like, New like, York um, expansion as well, which was good. I'm I'm gonna re-download it, but only because anyone who logs in between uh, Tuesday the 25th and May the 9th will receive a Leon S. Kennedy skin for free. Mm-hmm. So I will I will load it up yeah. just to get my skin. Yeah, they did um, uh, sort of stars related stuff at one point, if I recall. They've got stars stuff in Rainbow Six Siege. There's a Leon skin and a. Uh, Jill Valentine skin in Rainbow Six Siege. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I really like Division 2. Um, it was a good, good fun game, that. Yeah, I... So, well, I don't want to bring up the deck again, but I have looked into it. It actually runs perfectly on the deck, so I might have to download it. I feel like it'd be quite a good game to play on the deck, actually. You can just yeah. pick it up, do a mission, do an instance, and then just put it down again. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, apparently it runs really well. Cool. So yeah, Division Two. I wouldn't mind playing more of it. I would like to see what changes they've made. I haven't played it in probably three years, though. So. Um, I, I mean, that. and Ubisoft, because because I've been a bit mm, not that great recently, but they've been testing Ooh. this game called X Defiant. Yes, um, it looks really that. good actually. It's I'm not getting reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Um, good talk about it from what i've seen on social yeah. but i think there's an open beta soon there is a closed one but i didn't get i didn't get accepted yeah. into it um unfortunately i've but... got a i've got a friend who's in it and he says he's loving it yeah excellent i watched yeah. a few videos it does look good because because ubisoft haven't put anything decent out for for a while so yeah you've mentioned we've mentioned ubisoft and we've but there was actually another bit of news this week i don't know we mm. don't know if people caught it ubisoft plus is now on xbox Oh so yeah, the, the, the subscription pass. It's so more expensive you get all than the... Game Pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's like twenty dollars a month or something. And I'm it's like, fifteen ninety nine a month here. Yeah, I'm like, fuck right. that. I'm good. Um, but yeah, you, you get, get access... all the new games yeah. at launch, so it's kind of worth it if you grab it for a month when Assassin's Creed Mirage yeah, comes well, out. Yeah, you get all the ultimate editions of all the games. Yeah, it's true. Um, but. Like I've used you play. Pl- I mean, it used to be called you play plus. So I used to yeah. use it on PC. Like when a new game come out, and I bang it out in a month, and then I yeah. cancel the sub. It's what I did with Assassin's Creed. Um, it's worth it for that. I mean, they just don't have a big library of games I haven't played. So yeah, you know, and I think that's the same with a lot of people. You know, all the big games they've played, like Far Cry and Assassin's Creed and all that. You know, so. But at, the, at that price point, I don't think it's worth it. I really don't. I think it's worth it for like one to two months if there's like one or two AAA games that they've recently released that you want yeah. to play, but you don't want to yeah. buy both or whatever. Yeah. Just just knock them out in a month. Yeah, definitely. Cool. It's everything, isn't yeah. it? That's it. Pretty much. Wow. Oh, Almost three, three hours. hours. Fucking yeah. hell. I'm going to count how many times Slice is the word deck. <laughs> you started it I was not I was going to save it for the end of my games and you're like talk about the deck and tell me I'll about, the, about deck. the deck for like half an hour straight get your deck out yeah yeah I've got a dock for my deck <laughs> I'm going to dock my deck actually I do need to dock my deck it went into critical power mode while well, we were I do talking. actually have a question about the steam deck though oh yes go on Just um, are they readily available now or do you yes. still have yes. to sign up and wait for months no no you can just buy one um, oh, not in Australia you can't I just should mention I grey market imported mine because you can't buy them here because Valve won't fucking sell them here Ooh. Valve so Australia I imported gets mine. shafted on a lot of stuff, actually. Oh, actually. I know. People from, like, well, Australia and New Zealand area that struggle to get older. Yeah, they're not well, selling them in New to. Zealand either. Because um, I don't know if you heard the Australian government sued Valve maybe three, four years ago, and they won. Um, oh. So I guess they're probably salty. 
because they basically their consumer laws meant that before before a couple of years ago refunds were like not an option on Steam at all. Um, and the Australian government said, yeah, well, our retail laws say that you, on any good, uh, you have to like be able to have a refund period on it. Um, well, so Valve right, contested so... it. Yeah, Valve contested it. They lost. So the Australian government fined them like $20 million. So I'd say they're not in a rush to sell their shit here. Yeah, wasn't that so, one of the things why they brought in that's, the two That's hours, why they have the two-hour refund policy, is because the Australian government sued them. Yeah. yeah, but that still isn't nowhere near what it should be, is it? No, I think two two hours so, is well, plenty to know the game's going to run. Yeah, two, 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 uh, yeah, hours. Although you have exceptions to that, like Last of Us for PC is still fucking busted, as I've read. <laughs> but they, but what they've done is they've allowed anyone who's played it to refund it, whether because apparently the shader compiling took like two hours. So by the time you're in the game to see if it works, you've you've gone past your two hours. So they were refunding anyone that wanted a refund on Last yeah, of Us. Yeah, uh, okay. So, yeah, so that, that wasn't a good PC port That's by when all you accounts. know a game hasn't released well at all is when they're yeah. just like, look, fuck it. Look, yeah, but well, they did like that for Cyberpunk as well, yeah. 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 When you get a 10-year-old game that's been remastered twice and they put it on <laughs> PC and they just can't even do that right. It's I don't awesome. know. They didn't actually get their dedicated PC... No, they should have got the people who did Spider-Man to do it, but they didn't. They got the fucking other ones to do it. The Just, oh, yeah. who fucking was it? Oh, they Dick they balled up another remake. The they, they, there was another. I'm gonna look it up. They they balled up another remake, um, and it wasn't good. Um, I suppose whereas, you'll play yeah. it when it works on the Steam Deck, won't you? I already played it on the PS5, so I'm I'm good. I have, unless you can get it on like super discount, I don't really see a reason to buy Last of Us again. I've already bought it three times. Oh no, two times. I never played the original version. Mm. Two times. I don't know. Someone. It wasn't Naughty Dog. They outsourced mm. it. Yeah, yeah. It sucked. So, there you go. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. I think on that note, we're going to end, right? Yep. That's the longest show we've done in ages, apart from the specials. Um, so, yeah, um, thank you very much, everyone, for coming on. It's been awesome. Thank you very much, Sly, for getting up early and coming on to tell us about your, your Steam Deck. Been wanting to know yeah. about it for for a little while. Um, it's right. it's 8 o'clock in the morning now. Nice. So, uh, for me, Mark Webb, Gamertag, piss on a D, Steam ID, Webby, 360G. Nick votes on the Twitter and the Twitch. I'm going to make some breakfast at Sly Armand. And I'm going to go to bed. So thank you very much. And don't forget to sign up to the Patreon to get our special episodes. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash 360 gamercast So from all of us here, it's been awesome. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.